What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is our good friend, the super talented Brandon Parvini. Hello. And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor... We're working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, artist suggestions, and topic suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, MoGraph.com. Check us out on all the things and send us your questions. Noob, expert, doesn't matter what it is. We will answer it in the most awful way possible. Unless you send us an email telling us that you can help us with our SEO, then we're going to ignore that that email all together yeah i'll just (laughs) reply i love the ones i was just going through your site and it is so amazing i I was going to suggest that (laughs) mograph.com mograph.com and i noticed that you insert yeah anyway i really liked Um, your tutorial zero zero one (laughs) yeah yeah uh, I get a lot of those. I get yeah. a lot of those. I get a lot of PR ones. I think we're on some sort of list now, yeah. and it's like so and so would be perfect for your show. And they, you go look at the link, and it's like somebody who's an expert in like SEO and yeah. uh, good at like you know business CEO conversations. It's like, have you ever listened? Yeah, to I don't the show? think you've listened to our show. Mm, <laughs> no, you have not. Chances are, I love that. Some of the shows I listen to, some of the podcasts I listen to, actually never have a guest yeah right it's always just the two people and they get them too and it's like this person would be a great guest for your show it's like our show has never had a guest ever (laughs) but whatever um i'm guessing that works for some people but uh send us your emails we have an email from ricardo who says hello there from portugal hope you're both safe and well i love the podcast it's a survivor few are left for motion in 3d (laughs) Uh, we are coming up on, actually on episode three hundred. Wow! Yeah, and we got nothing planned. Nothing. <laughs> we have nothing ready. I don't know what we're gonna do. This it's year has too, gone too by busy. fast. Oh my I gosh! I was just realizing today. Uh, it's it's August already. It's like, dude, how? It's almost the end of the year. It's August. It's it's basically yeah. the end of the year. You know, it's basically time for pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> and then Christmas. <laughs> I know, Dave. You yep. know, that's it. Yeah, yep. it's great. Uh, he also says um, uh, uh, our show is his company at 5 a.m. Uh, for morning workouts, and hopefully someday I can go to Camp MoGraph. I believe it's a wonderful idea. Thank you, Ricardo. And Ricardo has some topic suggestions, mm. which are great. And okay. so I put them in the show later on during the topics segment. Uh, Brandon's been on before, so we don't have all the regular things. Yeah. We don't have to go all the way through your backstory and, and do MoGraph recommends. This is uh, we'll be hitting some other topics today, yeah. I think. That's good. And, I'm uh, I'm not worried about filling time with Brandon. Right. On the show. <laughs> I know. What does that, what does that just, mean? <laughs> yeah. That means you, I can ask yeah. you one question and you'll talk for like an hour and a half and we can just sit back about. and be like, all right. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I am incredibly <laughs> concise with my with my words. You are concise. I'm a, yeah, quiet, I'm a concise. quiet guy. It's easy peasy. You're one of my favorite people to just sit there and listen to. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, my wife says the same thing, only, only she says that because she's like, you know, if I'm tired, I'll ask you something and I'll fall asleep while you talk. <laughs> Like thanks. That's rude. Yeah. She means it with love. She's like, no, no, soothing. It's soothing. Like, right. right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Matt is back from vacation. Yep. And uh, it's been a long two weeks. <laughs> yep. Uh, for still, for both of us. Still have an upper respiratory infection. Five weeks still, later. Yep. Yeah, so it's not good. Working on that. Love the American healthcare system. It's great. Yeah. And uh, oh, we've yeah. got uh, a lot going on and. It, you know, I kind of had a little neck injury, so yeah. I was trying to, you know, maintain the best I could while you were gone, and uh, also you did fine. ended up laying in bed for about seven of those days. I wasn't yeah. able to even sit up or stand. I something got pinched in my neck, and the 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 pain was really bad, 
But besides that, I was having motor function and like numbness in my right hand, which as an artist is yeah. not a good place to be. You start you to know? worry. Yeah, so, I was I was worried for you that like, you know, you you lose an arm or something as an artist. That, right. That, 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 that's, that's your bread and butter right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I always a, wondered what would happen yeah. like if I went blind. You know, I've, al- I've always been worried about my eyes. And yeah. then I never even thought, oh, what if something happens to your hand? But, yeah. You know, I used to be when I was on the road uh, years ago, like 20 years ago, I did live graphics and lots of computer stuff for concerts. And uh, the truck drivers for the show, there was this guy named Mickey and he was a character, but he called me the wizard. And he had this action. He's like, it's the wizard. Nobody knows what the wizard. And he'd always say, those fingers are insured for a million dollars. It's like, I never thought about that. I need hand insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Taylor Swift has leg insurance, right? I think her legs are insured. Yeah. That's funny. Huh. Interesting. I don't Mm -hmm. know why it wouldn't be the rest of her body, too. But, I mean, you know. I mean, you think the singing voice is probably right, the yeah. most important part, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Uh, and I, I somehow, with this, uh, I still can't feel, like, the tip of my, my finger. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just trying to go business as usual just to try and exercise it because mm-hmm. my hand's super weak. So built a, a, a little deck yesterday for... Um, a shed that we're putting up and Mm -hmm. it was not easy doing that like not feeling it you know you're trying to like use a drill and carry lumber and all that but um i posted a tiktok of the lumber Mm -hmm. because the plywood was super expensive it was like 80 bucks a sheet which is insane yeah and uh i posted a tiktok about i got a great deal for 320 dollars worth of plywood and it's just the four sheets sitting there on the (laughs) on the driveway and I have had 34,000 views on TikTok. I'm like going viral now. Here's, so, here's the thing that I think boy. TikTok, I, yeah. I, I think TikTok does what I think they, they do because this is one of your first posts as your personal account, right? You know, it's my third post. Okay. Well, I think yeah. they take one of your posts and they like mm-hmm. push it to more people in order to inspire you to create more content. To keep going. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised. Like almost yeah. every, I, I've heard from everyone that like one of their first posts will almost always go viral, hit that 20 to 30,000 people mark, you know? Interesting. Yeah. 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 Just give you a little bit of that taste. So, mm-hmm. yeah, give you a little taste. Yeah. yeah. Person, so person I finished free. that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it rained on me because I, I did a second TikTok where I was upset because it started raining. I was only like 20 minutes away from being done with the, the stupid deck and it started like thunderstorming, mm-hmm. right, for like hours. And I posted another TikTok and it only got like 150 views. So, yeah. You know, how many followers and, did you get from that? Uh, Not many, maybe yeah. like 10 or 20. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I posted uh, me looking through the blinds at the rain at my deck, and <laughs> even if the sky comes falling, you know, if you're a TikToker, you know what right. that is. But um, so uh, that was going on, and the lightning was really bad, and it knocked out my AC. <laughs> so if you hear my portable window unit going here during the show, mm-hmm. you'll know why. Just giving you a heads up for that now. Uh, let's see. Camp updates. Let's do some camp updates, and then yeah. we're going to get into the actual show here. Um, I mean, we got some... There's not really much to update since I've been out of town can for you, two weeks. Can you talk about COVID policy right COVID now? Policy, just for if people you're curious who are wondering. about the COVID policy right now, we've we've got a... Uh, if you go to campmograph.com slash COVID, we've kind of got like a, 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 a rundown of everything. <clears throat> Here's the thing that I've noticed. After spending two weeks at Disney World in maskless Disney World, you know, like the difference <laughs> and and then, you know, having known camp, like you're not going to be as close quartered with people as, you know, Disney. As Disney, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, um, there's, you know, we've capped the amount of people, so it, and it's a huge right. camp. So, you know, I think the social distancing and stuff will be fine. We're encouraging those who aren't vaccinated to wear masks if possible, you know, or anyone who wants to feel safe or safer, you know, to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, I, I probably but we're going by I, the we're going by the yeah. guidelines of the camp we and the going, state. Correct. Yes. So as of right now, um, I think Oregon just reopened because they hit seventy percent. They're one of like a few states that have have hit. 70 percent vaccinated uh, adults and stuff like that right. or 70 percent of yeah. the population so you know uh I, so I we'll think... just keep an eye on that because there's a lot changing obviously with delta variant and things and Absolutely. so policies are going to change and Absolutely. we're going to go by those policies whatever those are yeah you know we have to I, we have to abide by those i personally am not too worried about it you know i know some people are worried about travel and stuff like that but you know We'll keep everyone updated. Uh, for anyone coming to camp, make sure you check your emails. You know, watch out for your emails because we'll probably be sending something out. We're almost a month away from camp, so you know we'll be sending out. Can't believe a, that. Well, I know we'll be sending out a welcome packet and everything to uh, uh, to everyone once uh, here in the next couple weeks. Like, kind of giving an idea of what you need to bring and so on and so on. And um, right. I think you've got like. Maybe a week left for anyone who's planning on using the shuttle or something like that. We need to know because we need to build out that schedule right now. We don't have as many yeah. people implementing the shuttle as we had anticipated. So, you know, it's right. it's fine. It's totally fine. You know, but also also if you are somebody who is a listener and somebody bought the tickets for you. Yes. I think we have all of we that have figured out. I think we have okay. all of that figured out. Yeah. Um, we had okay. a few people who we had to send off emails to because one person bought like multiple tickets and right. like we didn't have any of their like information, but I think we're, I think yeah. we're, we're set now. Okay. Um, all right, good. And just a reminder, um, if you bought tickets for a group, make sure we have all the other people's information like absolutely yesterday. Yeah. So, and, uh, <laughs> so, you know, we got in some of the cool swag, check out these, uh, these, uh, yeah, you, you should know, go through the sponsor yeah, list okay, and so show let's go through the each one as you do it. There you I'll go. Show you all the 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 cool patches that we got for each of the sponsors. So we'll start off with our with our uh, village sponsors. Um, we've got Maxon, Maxon, yeah. With the uh, then let's see who else the we've new got. Logo. We've got yeah. Video Copilot, yeah. These cool patches you get to put them all over your backpack. Super excited about that. Let's see where's the other one. And then we've got our other village sponsor. You have sponsor. to sew them on, or, or do you stick them? So, you sew them on. Here's the thing. Yeah, you have to sew them on. I, uh, there was some miscommunication with the people who was making them. I said I wanted iron-on backing, and they didn't uh. do the iron-on backing. And I just checked them, and I was like, hey, where's the iron-on backing? So maybe we'll get some iron-on backing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not too hard to sew. I've done it. And then our last, uh, our last village sponsor, um, Otoy, uh, with the sweet Octane logo. You'll be staying in the Octane village. Um, let's see then our uh, our gold sponsors. We've got Minimal Massive. Oh, look at this sweet logo <laughs> right there. And then we've got De Facto Sound. Oh, these ones look so sweet, man. The color oh, on these nice. ones look great. Mm. Yeah. And then um, then we is that also gradient got done in stitching? It's not a gradient, yeah, but the stitching is, like yeah, the... it's really cool. They did a really good oh, job wow. on it. I was really happy Dang, with the logo. That's nice. Okay. And then, look at these. These are great. Then Grayscale Gorilla. Love that. You got the gorilla head. Yeah, it's a patch. So, those are that's our cool. uh, gold sponsors. And then um, our our bronze sponsors, we've got A Scripts and School of Motion. So, big shout out to all of our sponsors. We're really happy that they uh, sponsored Camp, and we're super happy for them. Uh, for helping us out, they help keep the price of tickets low, you know, for everyone and very affordable. So it's gonna be fun. You'll get those. You'll get those patches in your your swag bag uh, for camp, which is gonna <laughs> have a lot of really cool stuff. I'm really excited about it. We're we're, yeah. we're gonna make it cool. So I got some boxes of stuff <clears throat> to give to you. It all got shipped here. So got swag bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all sorts of stuff. And yeah. um, one other thing. Um, and I'm not sure if we're officially announcing it. I should have talked to Mark before the show. Um, mm. but we did have a oh. change up on one yes. of our uh our uh fireside chat speakers. Unfortunately, TJ. Uh, will not be able to make it, so we've brought in um, an, another speaker, and we're super excited about it. I don't know if there's been any official announcement should we, yet. I don't. Yeah, I don't think so hold yet. Off, yeah, I'm going to hold off hold on hold anything, hold but, off but make sure official. and uh, uh, listen because uh, I'm I'm super excited about the new speaker. It's it's they're going to be great. Yeah. They're going to be great. 
So yeah, um, yeah, we're really sad that TJ TJ unfortunately had some stuff come up that he wasn't able to make it, and so um, yeah, and we've also got a few surprises as far as guests coming to camp. Oh that we've man, invited. I know it's, it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Camp Mograph. Uh, if you got any questions for those who are coming, feel free to shoot us an email info at campmograph dot com. And thanks to all of our sponsors and all the many people who are coming. So cool, cool. Uh, before we get into it, I would like to uh, just do a quick Ravcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? And uh, I don't have any Octane news this week. Um, I, you know, what I was planning on doing was updating all my stuff uh, while you were gone. Yeah, and I, I did not do that because I need to get on the new cinema it's, and the new yeah. Octane and everything now that my projects are yes, done. yes. Uh, you know, start doing that. But. Um, uh, Redshift wise, we talked about this briefly, like for a second on on the last show. But mm-hmm. um, Redshift has moved to subscription model, subscription model only. And yeah, so subscription only. And uh, there was like a really long thread on this on the Redshift forums, and uh, there was one in particular. I'll put a link to the thread, and you know, it's a bunch of people discussing it. And you know, every time anything goes to subscription, mm-hmm. people are upset. Like literally. Well- Anything goes to subscription. I get and, it. And but here's the thing: like, part of me was like, Redshift isn't subscription. Like, because I mean, in my head, yeah. I, we're renewing it every single year anyway. Yeah. To me, it already felt like a subscription. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, oh well, it's the same. Like, it's the same price. So the only difference, I guess, is that you don't actually own it. You don't. Yeah. I right. mean, before if it would thing, lapse, like, you'd still have it, but like then you don't get updates. We so, we originally, I mean, we have the perpetual license of Redshift, and then we also upgraded a Maxon One anyway. You know, so we have those as well. I mean, Maxon right. One is worth it as it is, especially if you're using Redshift. You know, and you but use one a lot of the, the pluses stuff. With uh, the subscription <clears throat> model now, the version of Redshift that you get works across all DC. It's all DCCs. It's always been that. It's way. not just. Mm, the subscription one I thought was always Maxon. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, oh, oh. Was only, subscription was only for, one. Yeah, subscription yeah. one has, yeah. was like that. Okay, that's yeah. good. The, the, yeah, subscription, now you can use Redshift and Houdini or, or something else. That's cool. And you couldn't do that th- with the um, with the Maxon one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Maxon, you know what I'm saying? You would get the Maxon one subscription that would come with Redshift. It would uh-huh. only be Redshift for Cinema 4D. I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. I'm was not talking case. about the the original Redshift, like by its standalone. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But the one that came with the Maxon subscription was just C40. cinema, and now it's all of all of the things. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's that. part of the deal. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. I mean, Brandon, it's, how do you feel? How do you fine. feel about subscriptions in general? <laughs> just not just this, but like <laughs> all these people that are like, "Oh, we're subscription now," you know? You know, um, I. I don't really have a problem with with subscription. Ultimately, uh, I do I do like having the ability to at least have like a legacy piece of software that you have around. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're if you let your subscription lapse and you have to kind of now go and, and reinvest back in and catch back up, I can get it. The thing that's driving me just nuts right now is having to navigate each one of these Kafka esque like systems that keeps changing every six months mm-hmm. where I tried for 25 minutes to get into my substance painter login. Yeah. I've, mm. I have been giving them money <laughs> and not, and not right. using it every day right. for years. Right. Yeah. And the other day I wanted to use it and it took me 25 minutes before I realized yeah. I'm not going to use it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just not right. going to use it because I put in this login. No, nope, that one doesn't work. Well, what about this login? Well, no, that one doesn't work. Okay, well, okay. So, what if I download my license? Ah, here's a catch. <laughs> you're you're no longer uh, um you're now out of your your uh your maintenance. And the last install you did was a was like a month after your maintenance ended. Mm-hmm. So there was all these things where I, I I had perfectly lined out where the installs I had would not open, and yeah. in order to download the old enough version to then open it, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, we make jokes about the American healthcare system and like some of these software packages aren't much better. <laughs> yeah. So right. I, right. I um so my thing is just whatever you're gonna do, just stick with it. Mm-hmm. Just pick, right. pick the system you want to go with. 
and let that exist. Even if it's not great, be consistent. Yeah, It's the same system as, as with, with restaurants. People go to Denny's not because it's great food, because they know, they know exactly what they're going to get. Yeah, and, right. Uh, and so as we, as we keep having acquisitions and changeovers and this new model, that new model, this new bundle pricing, this, and it... Like you, with it, Ado- it Adobe right now, like with, <laughs> with the substance. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, I, I don't even know how to use it if I wanted to right now. Yeah. yeah. Just like yeah, you I said, it's like, yeah. And, and it's like, we're, we're not, we're not even on the substance plan. Are we, I don't, I don't even know. If I we think for though, it. like we, that's we, a, we just the thing. did like, something with you two start licenses. signing up it's for like, all these things and yeah. unless you're using them daily, you yeah. know, yeah. You don't even know yeah. whether you're still paying for it or not. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I know I gave them like a couple hundred bucks this year, mm-hmm. but I couldn't open the software. Right. So I'm like, where where do exactly do I exist here? Yeah. Like here here's the thing yeah. that I I do like like I like the um, I like the model that Maxon does um, for like the one month you know and mm-hmm. uh, Insidium does this as well for like one month you know if you need it for one month because while we were working on our last big project you know we brought on a couple of freelancers you know who didn't have licenses themselves and so we're, right. we're we just right. you know do a monthly subscription and they pay for themselves almost instantly you know off of like just an hour of work for a right. freelancer or whatever and it's like yeah that that is worth it. it it's nice to be able to scale up and scale down like that yeah. you know i really like that model but it's where you've got to pay for a full year of stuff is kind of eh, you know yeah yeah and then the stuff you don't use regularly you know right that's the hardest part the stuff that you yeah, don't, like it, like it's for- like did we have a subscription did we buy it is that a license right. like I, I don't even remember i i don't know what our substance is right. and it's like okay now we want to put it onto uh, creative cloud and pay mm-hmm. for that monthly is that going to be worth it and does anything transfer over i don't know yeah i have no idea like yeah. it's there's too many things to keep track of yeah, yeah. totally yeah I, yeah and, and it's easy for the company <laughs> that's doing it like it's easy for adobe to say well all they got to do is move this over here it's like well yeah but you're forgetting that everybody owns like a hundred pieces of software yeah and that it's not going to everybody's not going to remember that you can remember it because that's all you do day in and day out yeah yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. The, trying yeah. to retrieve retrieve a real flow license is <laughs> is oh, like man. i know or or a uh 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 forester license oh boy you know yeah. trying to retrieve one of those that's that's forester has been better lately yeah, yeah. forester has been better i got to say <clears throat> but yeah yeah, but, yeah. So. Well, still to this day my favorite piece of software as far as licensing goes is zbrush god bless them for yeah. I, I don't know how they did what they did mm-hmm. but the fact that i i gave them 600 bucks a Years decade ago, ago <laughs> yeah and i'm and i'm still getting updates i'm still yeah. like you know the software just keeps evolving it, you know it's like investing in apple early on <laughs> just right like, it's just yeah. it just keeps giving you free stuff i, I feel like eventually they've got to get there the, the, you know the, yeah that shoe's gonna is gonna drop <laughs> <clears throat> yeah it's uh uh i don't know like uh, i think it depends too on like if if it really feels like it's worth it <laughs> right right like i i feel like paying for cinema 4d on yeah. subscription is worth it and the new versions come out and you get new stuff and they're constantly updating and you know they're doing something yeah right, right. but there's some pieces of software i mean look at adobe oh my gosh like exactly what are we paying yeah, how for many that we're getting I- more value out of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank like, you thank you for allowing me to have the advanced adobe uh, uh acrobat so that i can edit my stuff like three times a year you know, P- or yeah, or in design or something like right. that. But, it's like, but I don't how many new crap. features are you looking forward to in After Effects and Premiere and Photoshop? Like, I just use the same tools right. all the time, <laughs> over and over, every single day. Nothing changes. I could mm-hmm. use this the one from ten years ago and still do what I'm doing on the daily. Right? Mm-hmm. Still paying for it though. Yep. Mm-hmm. Been paying for it since Creative Cloud <laughs> came out. A long yep. time. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, the the one like uh, the one yeah when the so like for example like when Grayscale Gorilla came out with their subscription model I was very iffy you know and I was like oh I don't know you know but after signing up for it 
for like a, a trial for like a year, you know, it's, it's, it's like, that's the yeah. one, that's the one plugin other than like, say X particles or whatever that I've found that I use all the time, you mm-hmm. know, and I will, I will re up that one every year. You know, that one is worth it to me because there's so many tools and stuff like that available. Yeah. I feel like, you know, once, uh, once, a uh, a. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe like once the tool set grows big enough, subscription model starts becoming more valuable. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, I think the hard part that you start getting into though is we start getting into like the cable package, but <laughs> like bundle issue, where mm-hmm. it's like if if the package starts getting too complex, then that's where the bloat starts coming in of like how many extra pieces of software am I actually yeah. paying for that yeah. I, I never really wanted. Like I actually do one thing I do appreciate, you know, is I like being able to like very like systematically go in and just get three octane licenses to go and get onto the three systems I need to go do. Right? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I, and that is I know exactly what that cost point is and I can go and get and just get the one thing. Right? Mm-hmm. And so like the fact that now I can go and I can get you know, the cinema licenses and spool up when I have a bunch of artists that are coming in that I want to make sure we're, run, we're all running on matching versions and mm-hmm. all that. That's great. But with a lot of these, these setups, it gets very difficult when you start having to like get just that one piece of software I wanted mm-hmm. and I, uh, you know, and not be like, ah, okay, that's fine. I'm going to, I'm going to get 37 pieces of software because I had this one that I needed, you know, and yeah. Yeah, yeah um you know and that's you know <laughs> it yeah it just it, it all ends up feeling like these the you know like i'm dealing with spectrum yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean it, in a perfect world the artist could have an a la carte system that's only that that like can i don't know use ai and figure out you know some sort of subsidized uh prorated price for the amount of time you use it that right. would be kind of nice <laughs> but you know, it's like, oh, well, we notice you only use Substance, you know, 10 days out of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going to, but yeah, yeah. that's yeah. too, that's too complicated no. to figure out. Maybe it's in the, 20 years. It's the, uh, the gym membership, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's the gym membership. Right. Eventually it's going to be too hard to cancel a membership. Right. Like yeah. that's, that's my one gripe. That's my one gripe about, uh, Maxon's site is that like, it's actually very hard to like figure out how to cancel a subscription. Yeah. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I had to cancel, yeah. you know, one of our one of our temporary licenses, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. It's not easy. You have to like go into your invoices first, and then click on a thing, and then click. It, it's very confusing. Yeah. Adobe and <clears throat> a, Adobe. Gosh, I don't even know what that must be like they probably try and convince you to stay right yeah, give yeah. You a, a discount that's, price. yeah they're like yeah. oh we'll we'll give you you know a discounted price for a year or something yeah. like that i yeah. think it's like 20 that's bucks the, a that's month that's the spectrum or something comcast like that. method yeah. right there yeah. yeah right yeah oh yeah have yeah. to call you're gonna have to start calling <laughs> once a year to ask for your daily or your your yearly uh your yearly discount like you have to do right. with at&t right now i mean that's right. that's basically what i've been doing with adobe for years is yeah i'm like i'm, like, I'm gonna go and yep. it, you know, Arizona, I'm gonna do it. Every time I drop myself, you know, you know, right back down to that perfect pricing. Um, nice. So it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, t- well, tell That's us funny. what you've been up to. I yeah. want to know what you've been up to. We we haven't chatted in a while. It's been at least uh, a year since we God, that, sat it. down. Uh, yeah. geez, oh man, what have I been up to? I mean, you know. I, I, I always talk about these projects as if they're just like new socks. They're only new until you've worn them and washed them once. And then it's like every single other project you've ever done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been just kind of cranking away, still hanging out a lot. I um, With BMO, uh, Brent Herzl over there. Um, I did some work over with Elastic uh, last year. Was hunt- I um, just uh, wrapped up this documentary that I was working on called Fathom. That is that cool. now out on Apple TV. Uh, it was kind of that was like one of my moonlights last year. Um, I just wrapped up work uh, for us, the new branding campaign for Why the Last Man on FX. Doing some last little bits on that guy. Uh, wow. That was a fun one. Um, that one was cool because it was literally like right in vain with like some of the NFT stuff that I've been kind of tooling around mm-hmm. with a little bit, and then having someone mm-hmm. be like, "Hey, can we do kind of like a?" 
a painty, you know, hand handcrafted look in 3D. I'm like, yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 we can. Um, okay. uh, and yeah, um, I've been kind of doing some, you know, so, some back back of house work, starting to kind of pivot my head back more towards uh, some of the, just the the management structure and kind of infrastructure headspaces, like you know, so moving, starting to move the conversation away from, away from the box a little bit, which has been interesting to get myself back to there because I really haven't, I really haven't been thinking about that kind of stuff since I left Ghost Town, um, mm-hmm. but now you know. You know, we have some, we have some stuff to announce in the coming in the coming days and weeks, um, and uh, um, it's been a lot of business hat stuff that is um, really stressful. Uh, but um, <laughs> you know, but it's cool though because it's it's. I think for me, I I do deeply love this this line of work, um, and when you put yourself in a position where you're not just so concerned about the work you're making and yourself as an artist, but starting to think about others and how you protect and take care of others in the field and whom you bring into your studio and how you, how you conduct yourself. It starts bringing up a lot of these kind of more core issues, especially for, you know, us gray hairs um, (laughs) of like, what are we doing? What are we doing to take care and make this, this place better than what, how we found it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that's been a really interesting conversation that we've been having on our side of like, what are we doing to actively kind of evolve the uh, the landscape and rethink what it is to be a studio, what it is to you know, what it is to take care of, of artists that you that you bring in if freelance or full time, and and so it's just been it's been interesting to almost get a little bit. There's like visual theory that I've, you know, talked plenty on. Um, but then you start thinking a little bit about like conduct and what it is like, like good practice in our, in our industry. And you start kind of like, you know, we've been having conversations of what makes a good producer, what makes a good artist. And those are like really open-ended conversations. But when you start building like a value structure into the studio and into your approach a little bit, um, uh, it does make you take some stock. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, I don't, you're not having as many of the conversations about some of the render engines and about some of these things. You're starting to talk a little bit about like what it is to take care of the humans that are, mm-hmm. that are involved in, in this craft. Um, so that's been kind of like a lot of the, a lot of the core work that I think has been happening recently, you know, along with just what just feels like a deluge of projects. Um, yeah. I mean, if you know, if you're not if you're not busy, uh, go phone a friend because I'm sure they are. You know, yeah. Yeah. if you're yeah. if you're yeah. not if you're not working and you want to be, reach out because yeah. you mm-hmm. because you as long as you can move a mouse and show up on time and, and have a decent attitude, there's not much reason why you shouldn't be working. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, you know. I feel like I, have y'all have y'all seen an uptick in work since oh. COVID started? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there was, okay, so last year, there was a weird period, I'd say, coming into the summer, where mm-hmm. we caught, like, we were, we were working, we were busy, but there were weird projects, and, like, some of the usual suspects were gone, and, mm-hmm. course, um, yeah. uh, and then, as we came into the fall and winter, things started picking up, and then at the kickoff of the year, it just went bananas, mm-hmm. and it hasn't stopped. Yeah. And that happened at the same time that uh, um, that these uh, you know these fungible tokens um, mm-hmm. showed up, yeah, and that created a huge crunch because basically you were a really small industry, and so yeah. when we lost a ton of top tier artists to NFTs were, to NFTs <laughs> yeah. and yeah. to yeah, uh, to basically another industry, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you lost, there's a, ma- a massive brain drain that happened where mm-hmm. usual suspects and, and artists that you would count on to lead teams, and build projects around, they were gone. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, there was an opportunity for, you know, what you would have hoped for is for a lot of people to kind of like go, you know, next man up, so to speak. And you start, you know, bringing up juniors that were, 
you know, hypothetically working under those people, but that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And, and so what ended up happening is people just got spread thinner because Mm -hmm. you couldn't, you couldn't slot people in fast enough that you knew enough about to really get the projects done. So everyone started doing more stuff than they had been and their focus got spread a little thinner as everyone was, instead of doing three, you know, two to three projects it went to, you know, four to five, six to seven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and all of a sudden everything was just getting a little, you know, uh, you know, a little more scatterbrained. Um, so it's been interesting. I, um, I, you know, to, to kind of clock all the stuff, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely been, you know, that uptick of work has just been faster and faster. The big thing that caught us, um, was, uh, was production feeling like they still knew how to do it. And they forgot about the fact that no one had been on set or had gone through a lot of these motions for the better part of a year. Yeah. And so the, right. the amount of problem projects that showed up. Really? Of, yeah. Of just, of, of just, you know, people being, being out of practice, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. little stuff getting, you know, you know, which, which person didn't get approvals or didn't get signed off from this stakeholder at this point in time. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, eight weeks later, all, you know, someone's like, Hey, you didn't loop in Jim from, you know, you know, from, you know, from global marketing, he has opinions. It's like, mm-hmm. what are the, the projects done? No, it's not. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're bringing it back around. And um, so it was a little Wild West, I'd say, in the beginning of the year. Um, mm-hmm. Just because everyone was like really excited to get back up and running as far as clients went. Mm-hmm. But everyone was just moving really fast. And it's kind of one of those... It, it felt like everyone being back on the playing field, having not done any activity for a while. And so there's a lot of pulled hamstrings. Yeah. Yeah, and it it, feel, it feels kind of like to me we we had quite a few mm-hmm. big projects come in the door, mm-hmm. which is great. But a, I feel like a lot of our small clients have just kind of been floating around and yeah. haven't had anything, and maybe some of them don't even exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's people yeah. I you know I I'm like well we should, I wonder what they're doing I wonder what they're doing but we're so busy yeah it's. You yeah, know, we've got a few clients that we've had for years and years and years, and we haven't heard from them in a few yeah, months, yeah. which is, you know... Yeah. I don't think they're doing anything, you know? I mean, it's it's not, you know, it's not big work. It's always really small work, you know? But Yeah, yeah it seems like, like the smaller ones might be going out of business yeah. or don't have a lot of funds or, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so it's like the, the work is still here and we're still com- completely slammed, but the clients have changed. Mm-hmm. in the last year and a half or so. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and also too, we, we, even the landscape changed. Like I could usually count on two to three install physical install groups, you know, that we'd be working with over the course of the year. That, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, was, mm-hmm. that wasn't, that wasn't going to be showing yeah. up, you know, yeah. and, 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 and those, yeah. those were always bigger builds. They were really technically sophisticated and there was a lot of money mm-hmm. that went into that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I'll be intrigued to see in the coming weeks and months, you know, how, uh, how some of the stuff kind of re-evolves, you know, I, I am, you know, you are starting to see some of that physical build come back. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Concert work's going to be an interesting one, you know? Yes. It uh, will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean, those are, those are big industries. Those are, I, I, you know, and so just to see them poof right out, you know, yeah. right off the table. Yeah. Um, was interesting. Uh, what will be we did concert? What will be very interesting to see, especially talking about how we're, you know, we're kind of spreading ourselves so thin with all this work and having lost, uh, you know, people. It's like you've got a few industries that aren't around right now. What and once they come back, how much more are we going to spread ourselves out? You know, right? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, and that's a and that's a kind of a big chunk of it is <laughs> you. So there's the need for an expanded footprint. You know, mm-hmm. there's a, there's the need for new talent to show up. Um, I, uh, you know, and, I uh, and I, know, I mean, resourcing is very difficult for people right now. Trying to mm-hmm. find those new people, you know, is, is incredibly difficult when there's not even yeah. like the socialization factor as, yeah. it, as it existed, you know, things mm-hmm. like SIGGRAPH yeah. and NAV and these meetups, even small scale community meetups that have yeah. kind of evaporated, it's very difficult, 
you know, to get your name out there and to in turn, you know, be able to resource properly. You know, and you really want to get to know the people. You don't just want to go up on a Slack and be like, "Hey, I need somebody that knows X particles." Like, yeah, yeah. the the interaction that you get when you do a local meetup or SIGGRAPH mm-hmm. or NAB or whatever it is, you really get to know these people over a beer or whatever Absolutely. it is, and get Absolutely. an understanding of their personality, of their work ethic. You know, you you really find out more about that person and how you're going to be able to interact with them on a regular basis. Yeah. No, it, no, it, 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 yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, it, you know, a lot of it too is with, with, you know, and we were talking about this this recently, is with the remote work, there is a lot more autonomy that you're asking for those people to have. And so your ability to trust them, because if you're not working mm-hmm. in the same time zone, you know, mm-hmm. it just, you, you need to make sure that they understand what the, uh, you know what the ask is. Yeah, the expectation, yeah. the ask, and can we hit our? You know, can we hit, hit our, our our deadlines? Yeah. So it's going to be. Uh, you know, it's going to be really really interesting. You know, I I am excited. I, I think the I think there'll be a whole bunch of uh, of fresh faces that are going to be quick to be pushed to the front as soon as people can kind of start interacting a little bit again. Yes. Because yeah, I yeah. right because I, I feel like it's we've. Absolutely. I I, I completely agree with that because every year at like NAB, you know, there's always, oh, who should I watch this year? You know, there's always that thought. It's like, oh, check out this person. This person is new, you know, and they're good, Yeah, you know? And so uh, without that, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the motion show has been great. Yeah. But I think one of the big problems with the motion show or or at least like booking with the motion show is that you know Matthias normally travels so much that he gets to meet all these people and so he's able to bring in new people but right. we're not traveling right now you right. know so it's like he, he you know with every motion show and stuff like that he's got to go to some of the old you know good good old reliable people yeah you exactly know, right. as yeah. well as you know some of the, the the people that we've had before you know right yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I mean, hence why I was <laughs> I was on on it recently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's nothing fresh about what, you know about, about what I'm bringing to the table, but like, um, uh, but yeah. So I, I, you know, I think there'll be I, I think there'll be hopefully a lot of excitement though, as you know, once what, once we can kind of get people back in the, into the meat space a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know I don't know how fast we are going to be doing that, but I. You know, I you can feel the build of anticipation for for some of it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like the, I I almost just feel like too that like there'll be an excitement of even being able to compare notes. You know, of just mm-hmm. like yeah. You know, um, but a lot of that small talk just gets I think lost in a lot of the online discourse forms. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's hard. hard to, the, it's hard the to nuance, tell the nuance. tonality. You yeah, know, with people. Yeah, exactly. So you don't know whether people are being sarcastic or you know or not. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And and that's what is so great about like these meetups, and especially with Matthias going to all these meetups, and mm-hmm. is like it, you, if you want to get the work and you want to get noticed, obviously you have to you know practice and get good at it. You have mm-hmm. to be good, mm-hmm. but also you've got to kind of. Find a way to stand out. Think about yeah. NFTs, for example, right? NFTs blow up, and now there's so many people doing NFTs. The people that stand out are the ones that are doing something very gimmicky or, yeah. you know, unique or special or, or something, right? When or you go to these meetups, the ones who there'll be like legit, one or two. Oh, as of right now, who are keep, who keep going, right. you know? Right. Because so many people but there's have gonna fallen be, off. Yeah. You, you have to kind of put yourself out there <clears throat> at these things, too. You go to a meetup, Matthias will see... Oh, here's this person that keeps popping up at mm-hmm. these events, and they've got a really good reel, and like more people are starting to notice them. I don't feel like you get that sense, and when when you're not doing in person meetups, and then I'm afraid that that sense of community is going to go away, fade away in this industry because of the fact that COVID's happening, and we're not. Hanging yeah. out and whatnot, you know. There is that yeah. feeling. There's that I, feeling going to NAB with with all the Maxon people and meeting the new people and saying hi to old friends. That like I don't feel like you know a twenty twenty one year old right now has experienced. 
Right. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, COVID yeah. happened yeah. right when they got out of college and, and like they or, or or even blender people. Think about blender people. Yeah. There's because of COVID, all these people started learning blender because they were bored, mm -hmm. you know, and and you can see it. You can see it in stats, you mm -hmm. know, um, and those people, I don't feel like understand how special that community aspect of motion graphics is. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, I think that I think the, the positive is the fact that there was a long time that we had, you know, no community. And mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. built kind of brick by brick, you know, I mean, you know, by a lot of the efforts, you know, like Paul and Matthias and, mm -hmm. and what they, and what they put together. And so it'll come, I think it'll snap back. I think that muscle memory will come back yeah. relatively quickly. I just think I, it's nice to see that the, that the energy stuff cooled down a little bit. Because mm -hmm. you, what it did is it really boosted the tribalism, and uh, yeah. and everyone started pulling back and recoiling into smaller discords and smaller clicks, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it, it really brought to the surface that you know everything was super chill when it, everyone was being able to get drinks and you were mm -hmm. being able to kind of like rub elbows and everyone was all kind of just working. And then when, and then when people that were next to you started going stratospheric, mm -hmm. and everyone's trying to understand what was happening, and you basically have people that are just kind of being like assenting, you know, uh, that's yeah. the word, but like just being, <laughs> yeah. but, feel, but feeling like someone, like a hand just you know came down and plucked them, brought yeah. them up, and you're like, oh, they're no longer on my playing field. Oh, right. okay, and. And that's happening while you don't get to hang out with anyone. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's feelings and there's opinions and mm -hmm. there's conflicting of feelings and opinions. And mm -hmm. I, and all of a sudden you just started feeling everyone kind of recoiling and finding those who had kind of the most matching, you know, or safe, you know, I, uh, you know, you know, you know, safe groups and everyone starts pulling back into these different corners of the industry and this is even like amongst even like within MoGraph, right? Yeah. Oh, I know. What and, I know what you're saying, you know, and things, you know, things started feeling a little unchill and yeah. Um, you know, and it's relaxed a little bit and time heals a lot of this stuff as, yeah. uh, you know, as, as it's wanton and known to do. And also too, it's like, again, once people actually get to hang out in the meat space again, Mm -hmm. it's going to ease yeah. so much of it up <clears throat> every, yeah. er, every fight or, you know, disagreement or jets and sharks moment usually is resulted in just not being able to spend five minutes with someone Yeah, where all of a sudden right. that Absolutely. separation, you start being able to kind of create these narratives of what someone else is thinking or why yeah. you think they're thinking yeah, yeah. that way. And then yeah. all of a sudden you get everyone into the same room and you're like, that's right you know yeah um, yeah there, and, there's people that have kind of gone into like the like you said these little corners whether those are like smaller discord groups or you know whatever and then i've i've heard plenty of stories about this where like it's like okay i'm going to this discord because i'm comfortable here mm -hmm. right and then this group of people starts hanging out and doing whatever well then something happens either on Twitter or somewhere mm -hmm. on social or something and somebody gets alienated from that little group and then, mm -hmm. so then they're like oh now I'm over in this little group um, and there haven't been a lot of issues on our slack per se yeah. um, there's been one or two little things that have happened where mm -hmm. I've been like you know I don't see what the issue is here and I'm not discounting your issue at all or your feelings or whatever but I do feel like if you and this person in particular we're sitting with us at a table right now having a beer. This wouldn't have been an issue right. mm -hmm. at all because of that nuance yeah. Yeah. of, of, of how people act. It would have been fine. And so, yeah, it, well, I, yeah. I, I mean, the other, the other element too, that gets pulled into it, you know, and we're, we're, we're walking real far from MoGraph right now, but like, <laughs> you, you know, but also too, it's like, I was, you know, I would talk about this idea that we were on this kind of monster hunter vibe for the past four years. Right. Mm -hmm. Where, mm -hmm. you know, with the political discourse being what, where it was and there was this kind of body snatcher moment of like everyone kind of pointing at each other being like other, 
other, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and then when, you know, when that resolved itself to its own degrees, um, that energy is going to get shifted somewhere else. Mm-hmm. The monster hunter mm-hmm. vibes are going to go to other places. And I, and I, and you could feel it because there's, I mean, there's such a direct correlation of seeing like the ferventness in someone's social media posting or, you, you know, or Slack posting on a, on a sociopolitical. And then all of a sudden it gets swung over to these more community based conversations. Right. And it's that same energy, that same vigor, that same tone. And I'm not discounting what, what the comments were, but the passion that was existing in these other places, you just see them right. get, getting moved around a little bit. Mm-hmm. And again, right. and it's all just getting fueled by just not being able to be in the same space to realize like, yeah. you know, Oh, that's right. I, you, you know, I loved being able to like sync up with this person or talk about these other things that, you know, just the, like shooting the proverbial shit, you know, that yeah. you're not going to do on discord or on Slack in the same way that you would do, you know, barking over a drink in an, in, in an overcrowded bar. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody's on edge because of everything, everything. in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally everything. Yeah. You've got, uh, whatever's going on in the world, but then you've got the fact that most people are still semi locked down for the most part. Yeah. yeah. When it comes down to it, and uh, the the anxiety of that, and what's going to happen, and where's the economy going, and do I have enough money saved, and am I getting enough? Uh, do I have enough uh, business lined up for after I finish this project? You got all that going on in everybody's lives on top of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, and uh, well, I I, so. I mean, place on top of that the uh, you know the element of, of even like COVID reflection that was happening, you know, when everyone was like really in the throes of it. Right. When you've been mm-hmm. locked with mm-hmm. everyone that there was an interesting moment by midway last year where you were trapped in a room. And that and if you lived in New York, you know, or wherever it was, you have the ability to get up and leave. Right. You can get in your car yeah. you can go somewhere else. You can get a cup of coffee, a beer, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you don't get to do that and you're stuck in your house mm-hmm. with the stuff that you've bought. And the house you can yeah. afford, mm-hmm. and the people yeah. and the people that you're with, and all of a sudden you like you you are you are forced to like directly engage with the life you have built for yourself up until mm-hmm. this point in time, and people like you know people have you, like you can't just go out and uh, like and just break the tension of it. It's spinning plates. And you have to keep all the plates spinning. You have to keep going to work. And you're doing that with the idea that like you are directly confronted with the success level or failure in your eyes at that point of your life. When you are stuck in the physical box that you have provided for yourself, this is what your life has mm-hmm. netted you up until this point in time. Mm-hmm. It's right. not the coffee bar. It's not the coffee shop down the way. It's not the cool movie theater over here. It's not the great restaurant or the sushi that you love to get in across town. Mm-hmm. This is it. Yeah. And, and so like, there's like, so there, there's like a, this like existential element that people are, are like just trying to kind of like keep like bottled under the, under the surface with a lot of this stuff too. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's 40 chess. So the fact that anyone mm-hmm. is pleasant with anyone at this point is, <laughs> is <laughs> thrilling to me, Yeah, you know, because yeah. you know, like it was, it's a lot, it's a lot to yeah. talk. So, Going down that road, let's just con- let's just continue because we don't really have a lot of topics here. Let's just continue going down this this path here. So so, what do you do personally? What what have you been doing to kind of keep yourself sane, sane, yeah, and uh, and balanced and and feeling? I don't actually. I don't know how you feel. Feel. I want to say and feeling okay. Are you feeling okay? drink heavily no uh no (laughs) um no i mean uh, honestly it was a big it was a big conversation for myself you know last year that covid reflection was uh i think that was actually a big motivator for me to rethink the idea of being freelance Mm -hmm. that i've been doing this since i since 2005 let's say approximately Mm -hmm. and this idea of being on a on a treadmill and just constantly working, not really doing it. Like I, 
as a freelancer, I was no longer mentoring other people. I wasn't taking care of other people. I was just providing opportunities to maybe work on a cool project together. And so it felt like I was just dating yeah, all the time. And it wasn't really going anywhere. And the industry wasn't getting any better. It was actually going backwards in my mind. And, and I was like, well, I'm never going to change anything unless I can unless I can basically put roots down and start kind of picking a direction a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so that, and so like it forced me to kind of start thinking about things a little bit differently and it started feeling really good actually to do that audit and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and to look at, at areas that I liked and areas that I didn't like and try to figure out ways to enact, enact some aspect of positive change to the best of my ability. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, so like that, like that helped, I think, with the existential, because I think one thing with MoGraph in general is that it is a retirement-less field at this point in time. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't... Unless you're people. Unless you're people, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like, it, you yeah. know, or, you know, or you can figure out, yeah, like, you know, you can figure out like a mechanism in that kind of way. Yeah. You're, you're going to be making until you're dead. Yeah. Because it's not really, you know, or... Unless you're like, unless you're saving, and you know we can get into rich dad right. poor dad conversations, but right. um, you know, so it's not. I mean, we were just talking about the fact: what happens if you break your wrist? What happens if I, yeah. Yeah. you know, what happens if I throw a wiffle ball at your eye? Like, yeah, these are like fundamental things that, like, as you get older and things start breaking for se- seemingly no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Oh man, that's uh, exactly what was going through my mind, man. Because because my injury was just my my neck for no reason, okay. really. So, yeah. it, so and it, that's the yeah. getting old thing. It makes you start going, "Hey, wait a minute!" Like, are you a good enough art director to be able to direct a team of, of exactly what needs, what needs to happen? Would you become a TD at that point? Would you become mm-hmm. just client right. client services? Because if you can't click, like, these are the things that start coming up. Yeah. And and they're they're not really talked about because it's a really difficult conversation. It's a young person's game in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know these are all things that like I, I wanted to like really confront for myself at, at like a fundamental level. And look, I'm gonna be making something until literally I like I'm dead at the table. Like I've been drawing since I was three and mm-hmm. painting and doing and doing sculpture. Like I like making stuff. Like yeah. after right. after a long day of work, what do I do? I walk around outside, mm-hmm. you know, with a you know, you know like with a twitchy kind of scratch on my neck, and I come back inside and I start making something else, and I yeah, log yeah, back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I always have something that I want to be picking at. But there is these elements that, like, you know, I'm trying to get into some of these, like, you know, these topics that are just really easy to kind of skirt under the rug because it's just kind of an inconvenient conversation to have. Um, that being said, you know, this was a, it, you know, I mean. Being able to do, you know, being able to, you know, keep my routine of like my morning, you know, you know, of like workouts and things like that, and just trying to take care of my body, you know, yeah. uh, that felt that felt really good. Um, you know, being able to kind of be more intentional about some of my relationships with people of that, like, you know, friends that I consider like brothers that you, you know, let too much time slip in, you know, uh-huh. in, between, in between calls because yeah. you have something going on, and yeah. it's like, well, I got nothing going on, so let's. Let's yeah. chat, you know, so try, yeah. to, you know, trying to hit some of those kinds of things, but, um, I just miss camping. Like I miss, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I miss screaming at someone at a bar for reasons that I won't remember the next day. Yep. So, <laughs> um, you know, you won't, you won't be able to fix all of it without being able to have a return to that. Uh, um, you know, to some of those kind of informal actions, I feel like, you know, mm-hmm. But yeah. it, was, it was good, you know. Sometimes you, you know, being put in timeout, and you have to think about stuff for a few minutes on those mm-hmm. timeouts. I, I kind of, that's what I kind of felt like. The, that's what the opportunity was. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, you know, you can't you can't make things about poor me or poor us or what you're losing out on. You have, you, I, I really try to keep an, an attitude where this is an opportunity to. Hey, tackle something that has been inconvenient to tackle up until now. And so if I can't mm. do these other things, what is this moment screaming at me to deal with in a very direct way? So it became about these other kinds of things that were really easy to push aside. Cause you were just always a little too busy to handle it before. Mm. Right. 
<clears throat> yeah, I um, was going nuts after seven days sitting there not able to do anything, you know. I, I'm always like, man, I need a vacation. And then when I get it, I just... I have about a day, yeah. and then I'm like, I want to go sit in front of my computer and make something cool yeah. again. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's it's the it's that passion, I guess, for most of us, that it, which is why we want to do this in the first place because yeah. we we like doing it. You know, yeah. You might get stressed or whatever, but at the at the end of the day, like if I only work eight hours a day, yeah, then I'm done, and I go work out or do whatever, shower, and then I'm sitting there, and it's eight p.m. and <clears throat> my option right now is to watch TV. Mm-hmm. Or right. just go work on something cool, like, or maybe play video games. But like, I, I always end up back here because I this is my happy place. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's your yeah. job here making it's stuff. Your job hobby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, with, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I think that's where the fortunateness I think comes in. And I think that's also part of it too. Is like because of the fact that we do feel so fortunate to be able to have that mix of like pleasure and supporting the family or providing mm-hmm. a good life for yourself. There is that element of like, well, maybe I don't get to like think about retirement and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know. But it's like, you know, there there are ways to navigate. I think some of these conversations. But to, yeah, to your point, like I've sat down at you know, cause, you know, the family here goes to bed early, and I've I've sat down at the TV probably six different times to watch Tenant, mm-hmm. only to be like. <laughs> I bet I can probably get that rig to work if I do this. And I just get back down <laughs> yeah. and I walk back over and next thing I know it's, you know, 1230 at night again. And I'm like, well, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to hit snooze at least twice. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and also, uh, you know, it's going to take six times watching tenant to figure out what right. the hell is going on. But, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, um, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's been a lot, I think a long or short of like what I've been up to, you know, besides obviously like the NFT thing that I, you know, um, I'm actually still doing, it's just, I got incredibly busy because like, Oh, by the way, summer is usually the high season. I was like, so grumpy at myself. Like, why, do, why haven't I been on top of things? And I was like, Oh wait, it's cause the summer just happened. And I was stupidly busy on projects and yeah. that, that were like yeah, leaking, yeah. It, leaking into the evening. Um, but yeah, so I'm hopping back into there right, uh, um, right now. That was actually a really fun process. Um, you know, yay, I, I sold a couple and I have a couple that mm-hmm. are collecting dust as, you know, as most, you know, mortals do. Mm-hmm. And, um, but for me, what I thought, what I really liked the most about it was, again, this idea of like back to basics, like doing these builds that weren't about fancy render engines, weren't about particle sims, weren't about learning who, how can I get Houdini to speak to this? Da, 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 da. It's like, mm-hmm. It was legitimately open the software and soup to nuts. What can you do with the most basic version of cinema? Yeah. Like tracers and, you know, basic sculpting tools, no plugins, no nothing. Just Mm. make something that felt like something. Yeah. Mm Because I think for me, that was the, the, like, I'd gotten to this place of like everything was just feeling so pretty and packaged and easily consumable. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, and I had just stopped feeling anything for most of the stuff I was looking at. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. and so I like, I really wanted, and again, I don't know if I even successfully managed to do something that made me <laughs> feel anything, but like, I wanted to just feel like I, like there was a viscerality in the, it, like in the way that I was making something again and forcing myself to be really uncomfortable and have these like deeper constraints for not just timeline and, and stupid clients, but like, it was a really good way as well, I think, to deal with the paralysis of, okay, if I'm going to go after doing this for, you know, damn near 20 years, I'm going to go over and I'm going to make an art piece mm-hmm. after having not had a gallery show or my own yeah. work for ages, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the, the culmination of my entire career that spanned, you know, you know, CDing LP, working with Kanye, and doing this movie, and doing that thing, and doing this great project, and that great project. And it's like, and now I'm going to do an art piece. But this, is, this thing is going to feel like the penultimate summation of where I'm at in life. Because I'm now mm-hmm. finally getting back and doing what would he do 
if given his mm-hmm. own his own his own right. his own druthers. Well, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to encapsulate an entire career in some in some ridiculous piece that you're going to be able to squeeze in in your off hours. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you have to be inspired to do it. Yeah, yeah, right. Too, you know. Yeah, ex- yeah. exactly. You know, but people like. But you could feel this. You could feel the push that, you know, that, 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 that like guttural, you know, platelet that was like smashing people who like want to make this thing. Because if you don't do it now, you don't know if you could be going stratospheric or not. As your, again, as your, your peers are getting selected and, and you know, the claw keeps coming down and, and grabbing your friends and, and yeah. we, <laughs> wheeling them off. It's a great analogy. You know, yeah. to this, you know, to, you know, to this rapture on the other side of, you know, mm-hmm. swimming, swimming in ETH. And, um, <laughs> uh, and so if you're not participating, you're just on the sidelines. Right. Yeah. And so for me, it was this thing of like, you know, cause I'm so Brooklyn hipster about all this, you know, like mm-hmm. that, like you don't, you know, you don't, you didn't want to jump in head first with like, you know, being, you know, feeling fake or schmaltzy about this stuff or like going mm-hmm. in like, ah, you know me too so um and so i was like okay let's just make let's get me out of the way let's get me and my ego and everything that's that that is the problem because all those emotions are the problem you know it was just about why are you here you're here because you like making something you know yeah Uh and so and someone's telling you Hey, there could be some value in you making something for you and not just posting it to Instagram. Right. Okay. And, 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 and you know, and making Zuckerberg, you know, a little, you know, a, a little more wealthy with, you know, because yeah. you know, you're excited to, you know, to, to, to get some likes. And so for me, this idea of like, okay, let's just make this about restraint and constriction. Mm-hmm. Work with, work within a system and just solve for X. And you're feeling a certain way about what the work is that you're being asked to make and what you feel like you're seeing. I want to make something mm-hmm. ugly. Okay. That's an interesting prompt. Well, how do you want to make it? Well, you can use anything. Okay. Well, let's use some, let's use nothing. Let's let, let, let you know, let, and, and so like that, like very simple mechanism of sand of a, such a tight constraint sandbox was so freeing mm-hmm. because then all of a sudden it, it, you, you stop worrying about all the decisions you could have made. And now you're making the best with what you have in front of you. Sometimes just mm-hmm. sitting down and working with the Sculpey is, is actually really freeing, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, you know, if, if, for those of you, of you who have kids, it's like, you know, drawing something with crayon sometimes can actually be really freeing because you know, you're not going to do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, uh, right. And, and so like being able to have these kind of constraints, like I went back to, you know, to even like lessons back in from art school when, you know, you know, I had, you know, I had a teacher who forced us to just choose one material to make this whole piece out of. So like I had like metal dowels or mm-hmm. these like metal rods that I had basically metal rods and a set of pliers. And I made like a bunch of these like six foot tall freestanding people trying to make them feel like how I would like sketch people. Right. And these kinds of like moments though, like constraint can create really interesting, elastic and plastic moments in your mind where you're, as you're, you're now having to navigate and problem solve in a new dimension and a new way that there is actually like a really fun creativity that I was seeing even inside of my process mm-hmm. that I hadn't really accessed. I knew how to do, I just never put it together that way. Cause I never had to. Mm-hmm. And so then coming out of that, I was actually really motivated now to come back over and use the tools again and be really intentional and start getting rid of certain tools that like I just had around that I wasn't really using. You know, so you can get rid of some of those subscriptions. That was great. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and so like now, like when I am going back, you know, to Insidium stuff, like I'm being really intentional of why I'm there to use it. Mm-hmm. I'm not using tools yeah. to fix my design. Mm-hmm. I'm figuring out the design up front now. And then when those tools come in, now they actually are, it's because I, I, I needed that thing to show, show back yeah, up. Right. More of a purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Intention, yeah. Being intentional, being purposeful, you know, mm-hmm. versus just 
kit bashing and just throwing stuff into the scene Throw until there's just flares on it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. You, I just felt like I was just you, you know you get to a place where you're just throwing so much shit at the screen. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Dirty yeah. it up, put some put some overlay of particles on it, lens flare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know some noise. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know. So Call it was. It yeah, so it was good. It, you know, it felt very. You know, to the Brooklyn hipster point, it felt very farm to table, though. <laughs> you know, of like, you know, my this piece is fully organic. You know, uh-huh. sc- sc- you know, sculpted by hand, not kit bashed. <laughs> you know, all, all you know, all you know, all textures and materials are procedural and built only using in in cinema like mm-hmm. but it, it felt kind of okay like yeah. it, it you know to not be using a mega scan to solve my problems yeah for sure right for sure yeah so it was renzo says you're you're the marie condo of no draft. <laughs> does it bring you joy it it did it, Every- it did bring me joy it did bring me joy <laughs> you know and, and the- you know, and the chat saying like there should be memes of like your neck because your neck is so strong it supports your your giant brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean um, I, I can't yeah. take credit for it, though. That's all subconscious stuff. You know, mm-hmm. the me you're talking to is just the idiot running running the front of house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell somebody who's struggling with that right with all the thing, not just like the creativity thing, but the all of it. Who's even as far as like I am sure there are plenty of people listening right now who are like, man, they've got a bunch of work. I don't have a bunch of work. Like, you know, that's great for you because clients are calling left and right or you got big projects, but I don't. They're maybe trying to get more work. Maybe I mean they did they didn't have twenty years before COVID to build up a client base. Yeah. Fair, right? Fair. Yeah. Um this is an important moment. You're, if you're by yourself and you're feeling alone, this is a moment to try to. F- you you got to have. You got to have people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, this is a moment to be vulnerable. This is a moment to be able to put yourself out there in a way that might be a little uncomfortable, I think. Mm hmm. Because um, I can't tell you how many conversations I had with people where it felt like they were just flipping the Rubik's Cube over to a different side to see if it maybe made more sense Mm -hmm. by just keep looking at it from a different perspective to see if they could figure out how to solve this thing that was nagging at them, this problem that was eating at them. And, um, and most most of us who've you know who've kind of expressed that you know struggle of trying to get get through an idea or wrap their wrap their head around something it's really come out in resolving it through actually conversation with someone else a big thing for me was even talking to someone else i have this element where i don't realize i think something until i say it in a conversation mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. again this this aspect of like i can't take credit for what the crocodile portion of the brain is figuring out mm-hmm. so like as i'm saying something and i was like oh wait i do miss yeah. mentorship mm-hmm. i i do actually have issue with how jobs are being certain jobs are being run how people are being treated uh like i didn't realize i was thinking that way and it was so it wasn't so much even a matter of someone else had to come tell me what I needed to do. I just needed to get the stuff out there and and be able to to verbalize it. Mm-hmm. And and either a there's this kind of like you put it out there in the universe and the flow hopefully changes in a way that it opens things up for you, or b you start clocking things that you didn't realize you were feeling. And now all of a sudden having said mm-hmm. it, you're like, well, shit, now I need to kind of come, come right and actually follow suit with what I'm saying here, mm-hmm. you know, but if you're just keeping all this stuff inside, yeah, then you're, you know, you're just sitting there trying to find some clever solution to, to something that is so abstract. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the analogy of, have you ever prepared a tutorial or a presentation and as you're explaining something, you're almost 
re-realizing what it is oh, yeah. that you're talking about in your head, it's almost that same kind of feeling. Uh, no, a hundred percent. Because like you're not, we don't spend a whole lot of time doing the art history or, you know, or the retrospective on ourselves as, you know, like we, you get to, you, you know, it's so easy to, to come up with opinions about someone sitting across from you. But most mm-hmm. people wildly lack a self-reflexive tendency to really understand with any deep sense of clarity where they are in their life. Mm-hmm. You're 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 just struggling with what you with what you're struggling with, and everyone struggles with something. Mm-hmm. And no matter who it is, you know, I mean, even people, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's just cheese, who knows? But <laughs> everyone struggles with something, and um, and so those kinds of moments, like it's it's just it's important to be able to kind of get that those kind of things out, you know. I mean, like I realized. So when I did the, when I did the Maxon presentation, it was actually a really cool moment because it, first off, it was terrifying. It was the most nerve wracking presentation I'd ever done because you 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 don't get to vamp up on stage, right? Mm-hmm. Like you don't have oh, okay. you know you don't have a neck beard s- sitting up front that like gets them and walks away. You're like, okay, this section's boring. I'm going to move along here, right? <laughs> yeah. There's no there's yeah. no ability to gauge audience reaction of what's going on. You're, right. you're just talking into this soulless mic that's just staring at you, yeah. judging you. And yeah. and you're looking at a Premiere Pro timeline that's empty. Yeah. And you're like, you're like, how long is this supposed to be again? An hour? <laughs> Shit. Um and <laughs> uh but the but what was interesting though is as I as I started going through there, I actually kind of managed to to kind of understand even the journey that I was on mm-hmm. visually. As I was like starting to kind of like realize like what like DreamCorp LLC had done to inform other projects and how I was trying to work and and you could almost see a narrative that was starting to kind of create. But again, you don't mm-hmm. have those moments until you say it to someone else, until you mm-hmm. tell the story a little bit of what you went through, and then all of a sudden, as you're talking about it, you're like, oh, and then you can start picking up these like little clever takeaways of like, oh, so this is actually where I stand right now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You, ha- you, ha- you have to get that stuff out loud a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that's a long-winded answer, as you are, <laughs> uh, as you probably were anticipating, you know, towards it. But I-, I would say that you know, look, getting on the Slack and doing things like that—that's a big part and parcel of it, you know. And mm-hmm. if you feel safer in the tribalism of the smaller discords, find those, you know, like having those small one-off places that you feel like maybe you can speak a little more freely, because there is an aspect mm-hmm. of a podium you know, that happens on a Slack that you know, maybe you, you don't feel like being publicly pantsed, you know? Yeah. And that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. you know, but I, you know, find somewhere that you feel like you can have a dialogue with someone that isn't, isn't just 10 minutes and a quick back and forth being able to do, you know, a, a video stream or something that you can talk about this stuff, you know, and look, and as things open up, being able to have a beer with someone, you know, or yeah. it's, yeah. um, you know, I think it's important to be able to just get those, those abstract guttural thoughts out. So that way you can clock them a little bit. Cause you're not going to solve them until you say out loud what your problems actually are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's so, there's only s- certain places I feel like you can really vent in life Mm -hmm. yeah. like fully vent. Mm -hmm. You don't want to like fully vent on the internet most of the time. Yeah. You know, because you're going to end up venting and something's going to come back and bite you. But yeah, um, there's, but that's, I think that's kind of the feeling with the smaller discords. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, a good example of that, I guess is probably our, our halo group Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. yeah, because it's not a place where there is any record of, what happened it's not written down it's everybody's hanging out at the end of a long day and kind of just says man you know what really bugged me today and and you can just go off on that and not yeah. worry about anybody really getting upset or yeah or you know yeah it's it's very helpful yeah it just i i think it's therapeutic for people right now just to be able to have that kind of outlet and you know but again um yeah it just it just sucks that i uh, um you know that you have to kind of create that opportunity for yourself so intentionally right now. And I think that's the part that can right. feel a little bit false at times, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely prone to being quiet and wallflowering, you know? <laughs> um, uh, 
And so like, for me, like I felt really out of place actually like in this like digital environment when COVID hit, because that. like, I can see that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not a social media person. Mm-hmm. Like right. I don't want, like, I'm not particularly curious and sounding like a fortune cookie on Twitter or, you know, you know, posting more on Insta. I didn't have like, like, you know, I, I was on the slacks, you know, but that's not really like a real like replacement for the kind of conversation styles that I like having, as you guys yeah, well know, right. like when I'm yeah. in a room with someone and I get, you know, and I get passionate and my voice breaks a little bit, like, you know, those are the conversations that keep me, that keep me vertical. Yeah. And yeah. Absolutely. Late, late nights with Max on Rick over a couple <laughs> beers, you know, and yeah. poor, 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 poor guy's so patient. Um, <laughs> I, you know, um, uh, but yeah, like those are the things that like, the, that's what makes me tick, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah, walking with someone to grab a coffee and like working through a problem, like, mm-hmm. it, you know, and so like I had to, I had to get intentional. Hi, my name is Sashia Dumont. I'm a writer, actor, and filmmaker. Hi, my name is Paul Robinson. I'm a director, DP, and filmmaker. We are the creators and hosts of the Go Gorilla Filmcast, an online source for all things indie film. We are a husband and wife film team and co-owners of Send 3 Productions, and we started this podcast for filmmakers like ourselves who were producing on micro-budgets with Skeleton Crews. Go Gorilla is a weekly podcast that features various talents in TV, film, and web series productions. We've interviewed filmmaker powerhouses like Kestrin Pantera, Richard Raymond, Alex Ferrari, Cassandra Ebner, and Ryan Connolly. Amazing actors like Hannah Ward, Lou Taylor Pucci, Chris Wataski, and Eileen Gruba. Groundbreaking cinematographers like Jody Lee Lipes, and Jessica Lee Gagne, and many more. We also offer weekly reviews of our favorite films and shows, which vary from low budget first time filmmakers to A-listers, and everyone in between. Go Gorilla is proud to announce that we have officially joined the MoGraph Podcast Network. So if you love filmmaking as much as we do, tune in every Sunday for a new episode of the Go Gorilla Filmcast. Your your source source for all things indie indie film. film. Now available on the MoGraph Podcast Network. Yeah, I've actually done a couple Skypes recently that were on the books, on the calendar. Yeah. But they were not for any business in particular. It's just like, hey, EJ, hey, you know, Ryan, let's do a hang call. Out. Let's, let's just do a call. Yeah. We're just going to hang out. Yeah, just yeah. shoot the shit no, for Yeah. Like, uh, let's sit on this call. It's going to be Thursday at 1 o'clock. We're going to hop on Skype. And just like it's something planned for a client or another contractor or anything else, yeah. intent- mm-hmm. intentionally setting that up, yeah. you know, so that you can catch up with people. For sure. Yeah. It just, it, you know, again, it, 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 it just being able to talk with someone, you know, <clears throat> I, I think it's important for people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And then beyond that, I, I, you know, I would tell any freelancer that's listening to this right now, that if you're not busy, reach out to the studios that whose work you like, let them know mm-hmm. that you, <clears throat> that you'd be interested in working with them because everyone's having a hard time doing resourcing right now. So if you're not busy, Mm -hmm. this is an opportunity. Or even if you are busy, but maybe you're looking for a change. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs hands on deck and especially capable, trustworthy hands that, you know, that someone feels like maybe they, they can clock a little bit what they're up to. So if you haven't reached out to a group in a while, reach out to them. Because nothing makes a studio happier than a, than, than someone reaching out saying, I like your work because immediately they're like, cool. I'm not going to ask you to be bending over backwards to do something that you don't want to do. Yeah. Like if you like what yeah. we do, then let's, you know, you know, then let's hang out because like everyone's shopping hungry right now. So, um, it's a good opportunity to get yourself in front of someone. And to reiterate point, we've, brought up many times if you're creating work that is what you want to do let's say you're doing nfts on the side or you're doing personal work create the type of work that you want to get yeah absolutely because again and and that's a problem that's a problem that matt and i have right now we've got a ton of work we can't show yeah which is the work we want to get and can't put that out there and we got a bunch of old work we're gonna have to kind of revamp and make some things that's the work we want to get if we need if we need to put anything 
on the internet or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, you know, we've been fortunate. Just they, stuff keeps coming in, and we don't have to really update the site. But, but, uh, but you still need to think about that because as soon as a lull happens, you're going to want to send something out. You're going to want to say, "Hey, by the way, I'm available," and do that thing and say, "Hey, I really like your stuff." But if you say, if you reach out to like, you know. Marvel or somebody who's working on Marvel movies and you say I really like your stuff I'd love to work with you Mm -hmm. but you don't have anything that looks anything like that you've just got like two Instagram posts and they're like 2D animation and After Effects they're not gonna they're not gonna hire you because they're like oh sure come on board you're good at 2D so obviously you can do Marvel movies (laughs) right you've got to be able to show that stuff and we talk we say that all the time but I just wanted to yeah emphasize that no yeah I, I I mean yeah, this this does start getting a little bit into. There's a self awareness aspect, right? Being able to do like a clear personal audit of understanding like what you're up to, right? If you're doing a bunch of two D and, and sell stuff, and you're going to reach out to MVM, like mm-hmm. you you might you might confuse them for a second, you know. Um, I mean, mind you, they do actually kind of breach into there. So if you, if it's cool looking, they might be able to find a good place to you know to stick you, but. Being able to, you know, remember that your website is your narrative that you're creating for someone who doesn't know you from Adam. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and so what you're putting on there is what they is what the is what an outsider who doesn't know you thinks you want to show. So if everything mm-hmm. that's on your site is something that kind of makes you cringe, mm-hmm. yep. that's mm-hmm. remember that's yeah. Yeah. like that's the yeah. that's the smell that that studio or group is seeing for the first time as well. Yep. And Mm -hmm. yeah, with this last project that we did, you know, we were looking for people like, cause everyone got busy, you know, I could not, I could not staff this job to save my life, you know, near like halfway through it. Everyone else who we had originally just got, got busy. They were doing NFTs (laughs) or doing other work and stuff like that. So, you know, we're trying to find some more people, and the first place I go is their their site. Check out their reel, and it's like, okay, I I'm I'm doing a mental checklist. It's like, okay, X particles, yes, or some sort of particles. You know, smoke, yeah. fire, good, yes, okay, design, good. You know, layout, awesome, okay, perfect. I think he can handle, or they can handle some of this easier stuff. And if they can do that, then they move on to the next stuff. You know, right. yeah. and it's like, and what's great about that is once you find someone who can handle that stuff, it's like they, they then become my go-to, you yeah. know, it's yeah. like, oh, oh, you were able to do this. And then they work in a professional manner, you know, they, they get the stuff done on time and they are very, you know, I can count on them. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, you are my go-to from now on, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, you know, and I think that's the thing that people that people get shook up about a little bit is they they worry that, nece- you know, and so this will sound like I'm, I'm kind of flipping against what I said a second ago, but, like, they get, <laughs> they, they get worried that, you know, if you're not as, you know, if you're not as good as, as, as Dino on doing, on doing car renders and at the same mm-hmm. time not as good at... As as this cat on doing Sims and this one as doing animating, then you then there's no way that you'll ever be able to be part of like that tendril team that's doing like the Microsoft stuff, right? Sure. It's like it's not really how this stuff works. You do you do business with who you're talking to, mm-hmm. and so a known quantity oftentimes is going to be more important than a potentially superior technical exit, you know executor right. because if i right because even if i see their work and i'm like they're rad or i think mm-hmm. they're rad but i know you and i know what you can do and mm-hmm. i know where i can put you to yeah. get an expected result that's going to get filled easier yeah and faster than a unicorn out there, especially because of the fact that everyone thinks that everyone else is off the table right now. Yeah. Right. The freelancer thinks that the studio is doing so much rad stuff that they don't want to hear from them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The studio is looking at the artists saying they're doing so much stuff right now and everyone's so busy. They don't want to hear from us right now. 
Yeah. So no one, so everyone thinks <laughs> that the other one is unavailable. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to kind of break that tie a little bit. Um, it comes back to those personal relationships too, because you might not have the best reel, but you have a, a a close relationship with a person who knows that you have the technical ability, mm -hmm. or you have a relationship. We've got a bunch of people that we have showed shown some of our NDA stuff to because we're allowed to show it behind the scenes. So, yeah. like if we're if we're friends with somebody and there's a gig that's going to happen, they kind of know yeah. what we're capable of, but the outsiders, the cold call, the mm -hmm. cold callers don't, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's where I'm like, oh, man, the real. You want to see my real? Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, right. Bob. You know? So it's yeah. back to that relationship because the, the inner circle kind of understands the capabilities. Right. Yeah, no, so. it, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a big part and parcel of it, you know? Um, I mean, you know, the, the other thing I talk about too. So, like, you know, there's there's an artist that 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 we brought on recently, and you know what it was of why we he ended up winning out over others wasn't as wasn't actually like the technical skills. It was actually his perspective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his ability to kind of like deconstruct and shred a couple like current aesthetics that were happening. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I, and then i was like <clears throat> okay i like this and then i was like give me a couple references of you know visual artists or people that you like and it's like a bunch of stuff from like the early 80s 60s and 70s and i was like mm -hmm. rad yeah i know right. that whatever i throw you mm -hmm. you're not gonna come back at me with an approach that i'm seeing 15 others that are currently yeah. trend chasing yeah. something you're bringing me something else. And yeah. that had nothing to do yeah. with their understanding of cinema, AE, anything else. That, and mind you, yeah. there's a, there's a baseline ne like necessity of like, you know, of being literate on these sure. things. But the, the, the thought process that they were going through felt so in line with that kind of off the beaten path yeah. aspect that, mm -hmm. They were brought on not because of the technical execution of their previous projects, but because of the direction that they wish to go in life. Yeah. I like I was, that. I like that a lot. Yeah. And I was like, that's rad. I can teach you buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I can't but I can't teach you a broken brain. Like yeah. that's you gotta bring you gotta bring me your damaged goods. And his and and his were were damaged just right. That I was like, yeah. I, I can I can I can weaponize you. You know, yeah. that's cool. I like that. I pa like that. Pedro says in the in the chat, personal projects are meant to fill the gap between the not so sexy work and the NDA, NDA projects you can't show yet. I I, yeah. I, I like that. And mm -hmm. that's something that I try and do if I've learned something in a project that I can't show to do something else using something I learned from that or a style or pulling a style from something yeah. that I really liked that I can't show. Yeah. Or something, you know. That's that's worked really well. Well, I, I, um, I mean, like, I know for me, I personal projects are, are always the thing of like, do the thing that no one's asking you to do that you'd rather be doing. Mm -hmm. So, like, right. you, you know, so like that's why I think for me, like, I felt like everything I was making was so pretty, you know, mm -hmm. in and kind of shallow for a second that I was like, I will want something ugly and you know, really like velocity based, mm -hmm. right? Like I wanted to feel like rate and pacing. I feel like I wasn't having those conversations and I felt like I wanted something that felt grungy, you know, because mm -hmm. no one was asking me to make something ugly. Everyone yeah. just wanted something pretty. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, and so like being able to scratch that itch, you know, and then of course this, you know, I, I make it, I put it out there and within, you know, two months, I have a project coming up. That's exactly that, you that's know? Rad. And yeah, so it's rad. like, and so it's like, okay, cool. You know, like you put that stuff out there, um, you know, because that, you know, again, you're, that allows you to direct the narrative mm -hmm. of this is what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. Because if it's just about the work you're doing, that's reactive. So while you do have the ability to pick and choose the projects that you could say, you know, yes to, you don't have a control over what the client's going to ultimately pick. 
I have plenty right. of projects that, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I won't tell stories out of school, but we thought we're going to look a certain way and it ended up looking yeah. a slightly different way. Oh yeah. yeah. And so, and so mm -hmm. even in your ability to pick the projects, because you think that's going to help you direct the course and directionality of what you're up to in order to kind of say, we are this kind of group. I am this kind mm -hmm. of artist. Um, it's still going to be reactionary in its nature. So the personal projects and things that are self-initiated like that are the one moment that you get to basically kind of, you know, nine iron this, this work out in front of anything else and just be able to really curate what you are up to and what mm -hmm. you are interested in. Uh, this is an interesting question here in the, in the chat. Uh, uh, I'm in, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I pronounce that wrong. Uh, what should I, what should I do with this? I'm working with a studio that I was dreaming to work with, but now I feel I was happier when I was a freelancer. I get that. I, it's, Wait, what should I do? I get it. I get it. Uh, work, working with the working with the dream studio, but still feeling like freelance life was was better. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> all right. So you're dating someone, and it's, <laughs> right? And it's easy peasy, mm -hmm. right? Keeping it keeping it loose, keeping it yeah. fun. You know, <laughs> you can come, you can go. Finally, you know? dating your crush, right? And then, and yeah. That's, and, and so there's a, a couple things that yeah. happen. Right. Um, when you're dating, you can still go. You still get to like say, "Hey, I'm gonna go for the weekend," you know. And there's no strings attached. Right. right? Yeah. Like we don't live together. We don't share a checking account. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take on everyone's like all of their burdens. You still have mm -hmm. autonomy. You still have the ability to be like, "Okay, you're getting a bit much." peace. Like I'm yeah. going to be busy. I'm going to be busy for a few, a few days. Right. And so you can tell a studio that when you're freelancing, Hey, mm -hmm. generally we work well, but I'm going to take a minute. You're having a bit of a moment here. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and, and that, that actually just even jumps past the initial thing, which is like landing the crush. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you land the studio you really wanted to work at. You're so stoked that they said yes. Sorry, that was actually the happiest you were probably going to be right there, <laughs> right? The second that they said, sure, we're signing you on, that moment of happiness and, and, and exalted feeling that they chose you, mm -hmm. that you picked me, mm -hmm. like, apologies, mm -hmm. that's probably the happiest you're going to be for the next six months. Yeah. Um, I, so they pick you. That's great. Now comes, you know... Now, now comes the immediate moment afterwards where now you actually have to start. They, they're great. Thanks for joining us. Here's the shovel. Start, start going. And you're like, Oh, that's right. We still shovel <laughs> shit. Doesn't yeah. matter who for. Yeah. 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 So now, now you're going through the motions and you're like, okay, well, but it's cool because like now I can say like, I'm working with this group and they're rad and the project's rad and I'm rad because it's all rad. And it, my, my board's got shut down again. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'm still, I'm still working with the, with the same group. And, and then, and then it's working and it's, everyone's getting comfortable Tooth, tooth, you know, toothbrushes are getting left over and, <laughs> you know, and someone maybe offers you a full-time position at the place that you were so stoked to, you know, to be working with. Mm -hmm. Now you get to own each other's bullshit. Mm hmm. <laughs> And so now, like the now, all like the the staff members that you didn't really have to deal with before, like all of those things. Now you're in bed together. Mm -hmm. Now you're tethered, for better and for worse. Plus, you want to quit. You want to really quit, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it gets messy. Like, you know, those commitments. The deeper you get, the heavier those relationships are going to be. And it's not breezy. Freelance is a breezy life. Mm -hmm. It is a treadmill. Mm -hmm. You know, my new sock, my, my new sock analogy, you know, every project yeah. is new for five seconds and then it's just like the other pile of shit you have behind you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Sorry for language, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> You're fine. Uh, 
you know, and so freelance is just this rinse and repeat game, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, get yourself up for the next one. And that, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not a, that's not going to be geared towards growth, uh, you know, or mentorship or, you know, what, what your influence is to other people, how you train other, you know, like all those other things, right. That if you are full-time at a studio, you do get to start growing some roots, you know, Mm -hmm. same way that if you rent a house, you can't knock down a wall can't make the house exactly how you want it you take it for what it is right yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you move once you move in and you take up shops somewhere you do get to start taking a hammer to some walls you do get to repaint some stuff you do get to tear up the the Mm -hmm. you know the the turf out back yeah and you can start making it the place you want to be but that comes in that comes at a cost you know you are now entangled and it's now going to get heavy (laughs) you know the chat says you need to write a book on all of this. <laughs> When's your book coming out? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, don't know. I wish I, <laughs> I wish we didn't have like a hard out today because like there's some we're we're gonna we're gonna have to like save uh, Ricardo's questions for the next show because mm-hmm. we've our hard out. You know, speaking of projects that we can't show, we got a, a meeting for another an, yet another yeah. NDA project yep. that we won't be able to show anywhere. Let me real quick go through some links and we'll do the drop. And if we have time after that, we'll maybe address some of these other questions. Speed sure. round. It's just speed round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So links. I just wanted to mention that Rocket Lasso, Chris Schmidt, there's a new uh, plugin uh, that's mm. out right now is, is Mesh to Spline. Cool. Uh, so check that out. Um, also a link to, I don't know if you remember the the YouTuber who like fixed luke skywalker and mandalorian yeah. by doing the deep fake yeah. so lucasfilm hired him yeah which i think so, is hilarious see, that's great and uh there's a link to that and then i also just wanted to mention french monkey finished his dailies at a th- like capped at a thousand oh, really and is is um and has the the 1000 project mm-hmm. with all the the files and things. So go check that out. I'll put that link in the show notes. Awesome. So just wanted to let you know that, uh, you can get all of that. And, uh, I think that's about it. I think we need to go to the drop. You ready for the drop? I'm not ready for the drop. I need to bring up my notes. You're Sorry. Not? No, I'm not. All right. You think I would, well, be... I can do, I can do the intro, do right? The intro. I'll get okay, there. I'll go. get there quickly. Hopefully. The drop. Drop, drop, drop. Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. What's up and welcome to this week's episode of the Drop Your Weekly Source for all <laughs> things NFT and crypto art, as well as upcoming drops by notable people in the MoGraph industry. I'm Matt Milstead. Joining me as always, Dave Koss. And joining us this week is our good friend, Mr. Brandon Parvini. Hi, everybody. So let's uh, let's start off with uh, uh, I I I went to go look at the uh, the drops this week on the places and very like I don't know if this is indicative of the actual like industry the NFT industry as it is but or whether Nifty Gateway has seen it's like oh the amount of like I don't know so it, it have you guys seen some, some of those charts. Of like you know of market share for NFTs and stuff, and at the beginning it was oh. like, oh yeah, Nifty Gateway we like had a huge amount. Now it's like Nifty Gateway is literally just a small sliver of it. You know, most people have gone over to Foundation or Maker's Place or you know, and it's very interesting to see. But I did notice, you know, there are literally only like five drops this week. You know, five <laughs> artists, which is which I think is great. You know, it's cool to see stuff like that. You know, become a little bit more sparse versus you know loading f- people full of you know artists and stuff like that. And so, uh, really, really excited to see Nifty Gateway like starting to bring down the amount of people that they're dropping each day. So, um, starting off today, we've got Steve Aoki um uh doing a drop i i don't know what this is meet chonk and swole 
to the newest characters introduced by Stupid Buddy and me in the first episodic series to be on the blockchain. Interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's hmm. it's neat. So uh, I mean, very... he's into NFTs. You can see he's got a crypto oh, punk. Oh, crypto his, punk. Yeah, so, yeah, in his avatar. You know, so yeah, I I I'm I'm. You're gonna think I'm an idiot, but I don't know anything about Steve Aoki other than oh, the, he's been around forever. They do. NFTs and Bo Burnham mentions him on one of his songs in the new oh, really? Inside. Yeah, so I don't that's know. That's funny. Steve Aoki. So, all right. Uh, all right. So uh, that's today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, the artist Lush Sucks is doing a drop. Uh, I, I, these are all like memes or something. I don't know. Is it, Lush Sucks is an Australian artist, and uh, he, I don't know. He basically talks about just buy my stuff and give me money i it was that's what he's talking about on this video right now i, I don't know all right he's also talking about copyright stuff i don't know it's interesting so that's the third let's see on the sixth uh there's another one in between here but the, they didn't have a twitter account and you know me if they don't if they're not willing to yeah. post anything on their twitter account or they're even not have pushing one, their own yeah, stuff yeah about this uh this one was interesting on the sixth it's uh a um collab with hakatoa and blondie like the artist hmm. blondie which is i thought was pretty cool so uh uh all right cool. you know super it's, it's cool to see blondie getting into the space i guess i don't know I haven't heard anything about blondie in years so <laughs> that's cool um, and then on the 8th, um, Aloe Black and Danny P3D. Um, so, I don't know. Some uh, it, it looked uh, looked pretty cool. I, I, I like it. It's uh, Brain stuff. Yeah. Cool, like, mography, weird, Ooh. gross stuff. Oh, that's rad. Gross eyeballs. I love the way, cool like, the, uh, the, the, the wires are moving, you know, with it. Like, that secondary motion and stuff. Very mm-hmm. pretty. You know? Cool stuff. Um, and then cool. that same day, uh, uh, the the 33 NFT, I didn't put this on there, uh, 33 yeah. NFT is doing a curated drop. So I, I think 33 NFT is like a, like, a, uh, uh, like a virtual museum or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. So <clears throat> that's it for the Nifty Gateway drops. Um, next up on Maker's Place. Uh, oh, first man. Up- I, somehow I double copied... <laughs> these things over i've got to go find your links for for uh nifty real quick uh, or no for uh for uh, makers place it? for makers play oh here we go i got it that's okay uh first up yeah. on the third which is tomorrow um nick sulo um doing one big tech hard meds uh, i thought this one was cool i love mm. you know i love the the glowy stuff the pinks the pinks and the cool, blues cool. like i th- i feel like if you were to define the uh like nice. 20 pro what 2015 and on you know we'll say to 2025 i would say it would be defined by pink and blue you know <laughs> pink hmm. and blue defines 2015 on to 2025 All right. so <laughs> eventually you'll get away from the pinks and blues we're going to we're going to have something else <laughs> um let's see then uh 8 4 uh august 4th you've got skinny uh, reanimated Skinny. ink paintings. Uh, which this one was pretty cool, you know. So it's uh, some animation stuff with, uh, you know, some, it's like two D, yeah, two and a half D, two and a half D stuff. You know, kind of neat looking. <coughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, and then uh, on the fifth, uh, uh, Jose Delbo, the former uh, 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 DC artist. Uh, Death Reanimated Part 2. So this is uh, some new stuff from Jose Delbo, the uh, former, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, <clears throat> artist. I keep, on, Comic I, book? I keep on wanting to say Warner Brothers, what? but it's not Warner Brothers. Warner it's, Brothers? It's DC. DC, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Jeez. It's because, <laughs> you know, Warner Brothers has all the DC content that they're releasing. Yeah. Anyway, I got yeah. confused. Anyway, then we had one uh, one uh, community drop this week, uh, Francisco Garcia Nava. Uh, Actually, uh, we, got a, we got a couple of oh, them. Oh, we do? I've, I've got some in here, too. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start with this one from uh, Francisco. Uh, Francisco did this drop on Foundation um, called All Tomorrow's Parties. Uh, I, I th- it's very pretty. I, I love the uh I like the colors. 
I like the colors. <laughs> Very pretty. Yeah. We've also got. Uh, I just. I wanted to mention uh, Luis's uh, spookies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because this. <laughs> I think this has been going pretty well. He's got all these different. Yeah. Uh, spookies characters. A lot of people getting on the. Getting in on the uh, like character collectibles. Yeah, yeah the character collectibles. Thing. It's like you know, you he's buy got it. all these different ones. It's really good. I like the spookies. Yeah. I think it's a cool because you know he's he's does a lot of um, yeah. I mean like you've got the crypto punk, you've got like, the uh, kind of, the 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 what are the monkeys the the gorillas or whatever you know. Oh yeah, you've yeah. Seen those. The chimps, right? Yeah, the chimps, and then. Uh, the but this is kind of cool because like this is like he's he's way into like the scary yeah animations and stuff and so this is kind of like kind of in his will like the scary thing you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why it's kind of cool totally so yeah I like that um, we also had uh, I I also wanted to mention that uh, Windbush's uh, Windbush's NFT remember <laughs> we were talking about the uh, Om Art mm-hmm. Om Art or Om Art I don't know how you. I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, his sold. So they did, you know, this was a re- an actual show. Mm-hmm. And um, his actually sold before the show even started, he told wow. me, which is interesting. He had these in there. I got some audio here. I'll turn that off. But um, yeah, and there was a private showing, I guess, beforehand. <clears throat> cool. Uh, before the, the show, and, and they were bought before the show even started. That's and then cool. There's also some video uh, that you can find here. Uh, in our show notes, was that the uh, the same the, show that uh, the show itself that Brodeur and uh, Blake Catherine were at? This, this is weekend? this is the one in China. Oh, that's okay. the, one in, the China. one in China. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is uh, the I'm Meta. One that's right. That yeah, we were yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. them on the show last time. Yeah, and uh, so there's video of this here. Uh, if you want to check out, see what the show looked like, and that's then cool. lastly, I also wanted to mention this one. Um, and I just have an Instagram link for it right now, just offhand. I'll, I'll see if I can find the actual, um, let's see, six days ago. I think this was Friday that this drop happened. I don't have the info on it. I bookmarked it a while back. But mm-hmm. um, our friend Paul teamed up with Tori Bryant, who mm-hmm. we had on last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they did a uh, an NFT together as well. So mm-hmm. um, I'll try and, this is the Instagram, I'll try and link to the actual piece so you can uh you know check it out on foundation or whatever but that's cool he's he's getting a lot that's into the one doing that the i was looking for yeah 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 pretty cool i think that is all the links do we have any other links any uh other crypto links and whatnot that's it brandon brandon you got any, you got any drops yeah any new drops i uh, i'm a I, huge fan of your drops thank you Thank you. Yes. I um I have a I have one more coming. Uh, I'm in the middle of working on right now, and then I have like I think I'm gonna wrap out the like current series style that I've been mm-hmm. on after this next mm-hmm. one, and then cool. I'm gonna start pivoting to some new execution paths. Mm-hmm. Um, so right. pretty. Um, yeah, I have uh, um, I have w- I have one last one. I'm gonna change the style a little bit on this next one. Uh, I think I might go uh, black metal. Um, mm-hmm. With um, and like black metal as 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 almost like that, that kind of like sludge metal style um, mm. uh, of, of illustration work. So I've been kind of exploring that one. But yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully with a little bit of uh, mental bandwidth, I can kind of, I, I can kind of finish that one out. Uh, it's just, it's been a, been a busy couple months for your your friend B. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, 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 stuff looks great, man. Yeah, they've been, <laughs> they've been fun to do. Um, Pedro yeah. in the chat says you should team up with Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, that'd be that. I'd be I'd be super into that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I my other two are kind of sitting up there. I was, you know, I was kicking around. Like again, my whole thing was is I'm I'm enjoying doing it, and it was cool that they the ones that sold did sell. I don't know why mm-hmm. they sold, and I don't know yeah. why the ones that I have up there didn't sell. Yeah. I was like, you know, I was like, I can lower the price, or I I, I don't care. Like yeah. You know, it's just kind of doing whatever it's going to do. And, yeah. Um, I'm, I think I, that's the way, I think that's yeah. the future of NFTs, you know? Yeah. It's going to be like posting on Instagram, yeah. you know? Only you sell your work as well, you know? Yeah, ex- exactly. And it's like, it, you know, so I'll, I'll be intrigued to see 
you know, what ends up happening. But for me, I, I think the most important thing is the idea of like being able to have that self-motivated work that you're doing for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep doing that. And each time I, I finish a piece that I'm excited about doing, I will go put it to there, you know? And that, that, and that's the best way to do it because you don't want to put a bunch of stuff out there that you don't really feel like you were passionate about that you're selling, you know, you're, (laughs) Right. Or, or you're just, just putting out just random garbage, if yeah. not. Yeah. You know, hey, buy this thing. Yeah. You know, and, and, like, yeah. And there, there was that, definitely that pressure I felt like at one point of like, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's like, eh, nah. Like, I'm not really particularly interested in being prolific in that kind of way. Like, I don't need, I don't need to be making, I don't need to, to get into the dailies game mm-hmm. and, and, and just right. attach an NFT on the backside of it. The visual garbage yeah. element is part of like what frustrated me with the dailies in in that aspect, and what yeah. I found frustrating with the NFTs, you know, when it was like hitting its like peak, you know, kind of kind of moment, and I, and so again, it's that Brooklyn hipster, you know, like all right, cool, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go plot along and just do my thing at my pace, mm-hmm. and you know. It's it's selfish and it's for me, you know. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just oh I boy. just sold one of my. I just got a notification that one of my nifties sold. Hey, like, look at you. Oh, he, that's so cool. Somebody say somebody say nifty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How's it going, Matt? It's good. Yeah, man, it's been a while since I've well. seen you, Dorpy. I almost forgot you existed. Yeah, I know. I'm back from vacation as well. That's good. I spent a couple nights getting shih tzu faced. Oh, gosh. That's funny. I got to get back to my diet, though. You know, keep my dog mod. Mm. I went to my dog tour. Uh, my dog tour. Got and it, he got said, it. lay off the pepperoni and switch to cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I got to get going. I got to go work out now. No more lying around watching movies, you know, like bark side of the moon <laughs> which by the way they say if you start who let the dogs out at the same time <laughs> it lines up wait as, as okay bye <laughs> wait a second those wow, were two different gone. songs those, those <laughs> dark side of the moon and who let the dogs out it's supposed, it's supposed to be wizard of oz no bark side of the move is bark side of the moon is a treasured uh, music video i thought you knew that oh like, i did not a, know that it's a long episodic yeah you, you mm-hmm. don't know much about dog culture, do you? I don't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm running out of material for Dorby. <laughs> I got to figure something out soon. Uh, anything else on the the NFT side we want to talk about today, or or could we ask Brandon a couple more questions here in the in the regular part of the show? I think we should do that. Yeah, let's do it back in the it. regular part of the show for uh, right. for those who uh, want to uh, uh, tell. Uh, Send us your drops or whatever. Send it to info at MoGraph.com and we'll shill it on the show. Drop. 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 Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. So there were a couple questions, I think, in the chat maybe we could address before we go. We do have a little bit more time here, which is good. I think Pedro asked a question. Let's see. Uh, I got to find it real quick. Do you remember? Do you remember what it was? Let's see. The studio question. Where is Pedro? Oh, he was on... uh, That's right. He was on Twitch. That's why. Oh, he had a question, and I don't remember what it is. Somebody did ask about getting into a studio. If you... If you want to get into a studio and you're trying to get into a studio, what what would be your advice on that? Like, if you have, like, a coveted studio that you want to get into. Well, uh, again, like I said... So for a lot of studios, they have what's called a resource manager. And that resource manager mm-hmm. is in charge of just trying to book people. So getting mm-hmm. on, uh, um, getting getting in with them is is a really good kind of way to start it. Uh, you know, to get your foot in from there. The other thing that I would actually recommend as well is figuring out the artists who work at that studio. So if there's CDs, yeah. 80s that work at that studio. Being able to like, you know, being able to kind of find a way to connect with them is a great way to potentially come in too, because those people are ultimately going to be the ones who say, "Hey, this cat's up to something interesting. 
or they're really, you know, they've been really cool. I've been talking with them on social. Like, it's a great way to yeah. kind of like do a bit of an end around versus mm-hmm. the kind of cattle call aspects that the resource manager is going to going to be bringing, you know? I mean, so definitely keep right. yourself top of mind for the resource manager. Um, and again, being able to reach out and, you know, say, hey, I'm a fan of the studio's work, you know, and and being being clear as well about the kind of stuff that you do. Don't show. I think that's a great thing to do, like with somebody who works in a studio, especially if it's like a mentor type situation, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You, you know, so it's like I, um, there's there's a couple different routes that I recommend with people. If you're if you're if you're reaching out to the studio, making sure that you're clear that like you don't just come up and say, "Hi, I do MoGraph. Would you like to work with me?" Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, so these people are trying to solve for X. So, you know, being able to be clear of like, Hey, huge fan of your work, love X and Y piece. Um, uh, you know, would love to find an opportunity should a project like that come up, you know, to be able to, you know, to be able to work with you all on, uh, you know, I specialize in simulation, render, look dev and animation. Okay, cool. Someone now has an understanding of like how to clock you. Right. Now, Mm -hmm. like, you know, you're trying to find a way to make yourself bite size. Don't need to know the full backstory of, you know, like, you know, I grew up, you know, I I grew up a happy boy in the hills of Mm -hmm. like, no one cares. They just want to understand for this project that's happening in 24 hours that we need to staff up for, where could I potentially slot you? Like I'm excited. Yeah, it's not it's not yeah. a recipe on the internet. You don't have yeah. to put the back the life story in. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. being able to be briefed that kind of way, when when we talk about reaching out to an artist that you like, whose work you like, and potentially by in turn maybe being able to like develop a relationship there, <clears throat> being able to reach out to them on a piece that, that you like of theirs, and one thing one piece of feedback that I like being able to tell someone if you're really trying to create a genuine relationship with that person is be specific about what it is that you like about their work. Doing another like another comment of like this is dope with like five fire mm-hmm. emojis means <laughs> nothing. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone so it changes the relationship when you say Look, what you're doing with your, you know, you know, with your composition or your color palettes or your animation mm-hmm. style, or I love the feels that you're being able to develop using X, Y, and Z. Have a compliment, like have something, like have a conversation starter that feels a little specific to the work. Is a great way to have someone feel as though they're being seen, and that yeah. you're clocking what they're doing and why what they're doing is special. Yeah. As such, yeah, like, oh, how did you get the particles to do this thing on ex- on that? You know, is a better comment than that render is fire. Yeah, right? exa- it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, like I mean, I, I recently like reached out, reached out to like Robot Pencil, and I was like, hey, are you projecting on the mesh right now, or are you doing this like fully two D? He's like, no, no, I'm projecting on the mesh. It's like now I have a conversation mm-hmm. starter of like, well, how often do you like doing that? Like, now all of a sudden you're being able to talk shop with someone whose work you like and now Mm -hmm. you're beginning to develop a dialogue yeah it's much easier to say hey at the end of that if you ever have something i would love to help collaborate or contribute to this kind of an effort with you right yeah and a lot of times if you're really impressive or impressing those people they might not even ask hey are you available for this they might or or they, they might not need you to say, hey, I'm available for this if you need me. Because right. if you already have that relationship, like if somebody came to me and says, and said, like, I need this, like, specific tune look in cinema, and it looked like EJ's stuff, I'd be like, hey, EJ, are you available? Right. Yeah. Like, I don't need, EJ's not going to come to me and say, hey, if you, if you got any, if you need any cartoon work done or, like, tune look and work, like, he's not going to say that. Yeah. Like, if right. people already know what you're capable of, you don't even have to nudge them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, know? you know, but by creating that that line of communication, it creates this notion that you're open to potentially talking with this person in a deeper way. You know, so it's like it's been mm-hmm. really cool. Like for me, like when I get like really specific like kindness that comes from certain mm-hmm. artists, I'm like, Brad, I would, I'm actually now open to like potentially working with this group. Like, yeah, right, because they've 
I, I have several of their artists that have reached out that are like, hey, I like what you're up to. You know, what are you doing over here? Hey, have you ever thought of trying it like this? And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. I have a dialogue now with like multiple people at that shop or like this or now I have like a, an avenue over here. It just it starts adjusting the game a little bit. But now you're you know, you're, you're yeah. creating more meaningful relationships, you know, rather yeah. than just another fire emoji. It's the, that's, uh, the it's, that's the value it's, of the community. It's the yeah. thing where they say, uh, uh, like, if you if you want to connect with someone, use their name. You yeah. know, like mm. while yeah. I was in Disney, anytime I had a question that uh, that was like, I kind of want to get something, I'd right. make sure to use the <laughs> cast member's name, name. when I was yeah. talking yeah. to yeah. them yeah. because you'd have a much more friendly dialogue. You yeah. know, it's something similar to that. You're creating. You're creating a a relationship without actually, you know, it, it's it may be, you know, lower level relationship, but they, you know, people will connect with you more, you know, by right. doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah. So you know, you're just trying to the more gen, you know, the, the more opportunities <laughs> you have to create to create genuine connections with other artists, even if <laughs> e- even if they're super senior to you, like, uh-huh. you know. It's, um, I, um, (laughs) I, you know, it's just, it's an opportunity and, and it's free. Absolutely. You know, so that, you know, those would be my, my two initial kind of starting points that I would, I would say, and that has nothing to do with your skills. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do (laughs) with you, with you licensing something or getting, or doing anything to be better. It has everything to do with you just engaging with someone at a human level. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And Pedro was asking if if you do mostly studio work or direct with clients like businesses. Uh, it bounces around, really. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I, I I I couldn't sum that up really in any like one clear sense. I mean, I I do work with agencies. I do work with network. I do work with direct to client, um, uh, studio. You know it. I, but I've been doing this for a long time, so they mm-hmm. they show up from all kinds of broom closets these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's hard to package that up in any one like tight answer. Well, I think we could go on forever, but we, we do have a hard out that we're about to hit, and we yeah. got to get with you about getting files and things after the show as well. So yeah, we gotta we gotta get going, but we're gonna have to absolutely do this again a lot sooner. Yeah. Then later next time, yeah, and you, uh, hopefully if, meet up in person. If you come to NAB, we, we Dave, we should really start considering doing a show. Oh, what? Never mind. I don't even know if you're going to be there. <laughs> I, don't I, even know. I at best you'll see me there for one day. Oh, by the way, uh, I'll put the link in the show notes. The the School of Motion uh, meetup at yes. NAB that Sunday. Uh, that's happening. We're sponsoring a bunch of other people mm-hmm. are sponsoring. We'll talk about it more uh, next show, but um, I'll put a link in there. But yes. Um, yeah, I don't know about a show. Yeah, I maybe not a I'll show. I don't know if I'll be at NAB. I might be having yeah. a kid. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of up in the air at this point whether or not I'm going to go to NAB or yeah. if we're going to be like, oh, it's too close. Yeah. Just monitoring that situation. So uh, maybe one day just to make sure everything's cool and there's no tech issues. Yeah. But that's about Help all you'll get Help us get everything set the- up and then we're good to go. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Brandon uh, – where can people find you? Speaking of community and connecting with people <laughs> on the internet. Uh, let's see here. Um, so, I mean, obviously you can, uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, B Parvini. Uh, you can, you can ping me on Instagram, uh, B underscore Parvini. Somehow there's another B Parvini out there. Some jerk took Weird. my, <laughs> yeah, I know, right. Um, sure. I, um, I, you know, you'll find me on the mograph.com slack. I, um, and you can, if you want to hit me directly, um, I try my best to be to be prompt about responding to you. You can ping me at uh, um, Brandon at Alcom.tv, and uh, we can get into deeper conversations from there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, don't be a stranger. I, I really try my best to, you know, to chat back and, and answer questions that anyone may ever have with whatever terrible advice I have to give you. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, all right. We're going to get out of here, hop on our call. You can rate us on iTunes. 
and leave a review. Helps get our ratings up. Subscribe on your <laughs> podcatcher of choice. Also, the newsletter, it will go out eventually. Mm-hmm. This month, I've been a little bit behind with my uh, medical issue. So my thought was trying to finish my tutorial yeah. that I was working on and, and put that in the things. newsletter. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. smart. There you go. <laughs> uh, but I haven't finished that yet, so yep. the newsletter will go out soon. And uh, you can say you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt with the MoGraph logo T, the Paul Bab classic, feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. Render Things T-shirt, hoodie, and long sleeve tee, that's our most popular one. The that Render Is Fire shirt, which you are only <laughs> allowed to wear, ironically. Unless, unless you're, you're shams. shams. Yeah. And then there's the MoGraph Blandishment shirt which i am wearing the graphic blandishment shirt you can get that on there and we're on facebook twitter instagram youtube tiktok some real fun stuff coming out on tiktok check us out there mm-hmm. make sure you follow so we get more followers on our tiktok than my daughter has on her tiktok <laughs> it's a race it's a race and uh you're, you're gonna lose <laughs> yeah yeah you're gonna lose i know you're gonna I lose. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on all the things check us out there again brandon yeah thank you, thank so, you much. so much for being it's always show. amazing always yeah, it's always, a blast. As usual. it's always a blast hanging out with you guys. Um, and, oh, uh, I've been doing uh, um, a clubhouse on Sundays with David Coe, uh, um, James, uh, James Ramirez, nice. and, like, and it's been a really cool group. Uh, Ryan Summers has been hanging out. So cool. more questions Sweet. and stuff like this. Uh, again, for community aspects, just find areas to connect with people. Yeah, totally. Sweet. Sure. Awesome. All right. Thanks for letting me hang out, guys. Well, we're going to get out of here. We uh, appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you on the interwebs. Until next time, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And you're Brandon. Human. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, thank you guys so much for having me on. Have a good one. Later, yo. Cheers. Pretty good, I guess. MoGraph.com, an online resource for motion graphic artists. Start your week with the MoGraph podcast. Industry news, interviews with your favorite artists, and terrible humor. Watch live shows and interviews from MoGraph events like NAB, SeaGraph, HalfRes, and local meetups. (laughs) Our MoGraph talks feature live demos and motivation from artists all around the world. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. What if Rick and Morty show up for the countdown at midnight? That's where I peaked in life, in my career. we got to stop this thing, Rick! It's going to kill us all! Hear from the people that create your software, design your render engines, and artists that are changing the face of modern motion graphics. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? MoGraph tutorials and online classes will teach you about Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other popular software and render engines. Throw in the HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. Branch into new software. Learn time-saving tips, techniques, workflows, and lessons that will keep you up to date in the world of motion design. Oh, brother, those are some of my favorite elves. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join the conversation in our live sessions. Check out our plugins or join the hundreds of daily active users in our Slack channel for technical help, advice, contests, or just to joke around. Real nice banana. Ah, That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. (laughs) Subscribe today and get the latest updates on our YouTube and other social media channels. Take all your dreams and just do it. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe to MoGraph.com.